Tabletop Notch. Yeah. We're here today for chapter 15. Nice even round 15. <laughs> even? Even? Uh, no, like, a, like it's, a like, it fits nicely into <laughs> not, not trying. Wow. It's like 10, 15. It's divisible by many pairs. Um, anybody with any thoughts before we jump in? Uh, we officially are affiliate status. Yeah, uh, so exciting. Which is great. But We've already had a couple of subscribers. Right? Yeah. It's like right here. It's no. Subscribe to me. Just watch all of our Instagram and stories. And and don't follow, the yeah. follow any of our <laughs> At <laughs> Lee Pressman, I have all of John's uh, pictures of how to subscribe. Oh, yes. Okay. Got it. Cool. Um, Not like just follow me. I didn't know a few people was. have already subscribed. Thank you guys so much. Um, yes. If you want to subscribe, please do. And also, uh, in the description below, if you do subscribe and you want to leave a little note in the book that plays at the beginning and the end of the stream, it will stay there indefinitely at the moment. So have a little Yay. note for us. Um, we're happy nice to add note. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, there's, a, there's a disclaimer that says we reserve the right to reject mean notes. Uh, yeah. uh, mean's okay. Gross is not okay. Right. Inappropriate. Yes, nothing inappropriate. Mean, not gross. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other thoughts? Anybody? No. Yep. All right. We're going to roll that intro. It's okay. It's okay. Demo lady. And then okay. we'll dive right into it. Okay. All right. Step. Hit that intro. Hit that intro. In chapter 14, caught in the crossing fire, we hit the ground running as the scout in the lookout tower, seeing what happened to the two black line barbarians preparing to attack, took aim at Orba. In a split second decision, Orba dropped her disguise, which gave the scout enough reason to change targets, uniting against a common enemy. Entering into an enraged state, the barbarian hurled two hatchets, dealing devastating damage before turning his attention to destroying a trinket that he tore from a string around his neck. With the rest of the party charging into the fray, we were able to subdue the Black Lion before he destroyed the object, but it was too late for the maimed lookout. The importance of the item turned out to be paramount, and turned, oh, that sentence, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> the item of importance turned out to be a whistle, whose function was not yet apparent. So we covered our tracks and pressed forward into the denser area of the forest. This stretch of road was unsettlingly quiet and a vulgar stench was accompanied by rotting piles of flesh and bone in regular intervals along the path. A sign that someone, or something, had constructed a length of desecrated ground to amplify any necromantic powers. In this unholy place, a number of restless spirits closed in around us, and finding the barbarian's whistle to be the focus of their attention, Sephira blew into it, sending the spirits cascading back before resuming their slow approach. We picked up the pace, Safira keeping the spirits at bay and Bazara manning the reins, 
and things were running relatively smoothly until a distant explosion sent the spirits scattering, causing mayhem both inside and outside the carriage. With a sinking feeling that the blast had originated at our intended destination, we did our best to soothe the horses and follow the sounds of running water that led us to the Bukhara River. Before we left the desecrated ground, however, one of the spirits bargained for our whistle by offering a spell scroll in return, a transaction that Sephira approached with great caution while hoping that it might soothe these <coughs> disturbed woods. When the road finally met up with the river, billowing smoke from the crossing, along with a steady diet of debris floating downstream, confirmed our suspicions, and we broke for the bridge at a full gallop. A significant portion of the bridge, as well as a couple nearby structures, had been obliterated in the explosion. And while we could not bring the carriage safely across, some careful maneuvering allowed us to swing, crawl, and climb our way across the wreckage <laughs> to the other side. The buildings at the crossing had mostly been reduced to rubble, but among the many bodies littering the ground, we found a man still breathing, Tatten Othmar, whose necrotic wounds were beyond our capability to heal, but he was able to focus long enough to explain what had happened. Apparently a secret storeroom of highly volatile necrocilium had been detonated while the Black Lion transport had been stalled at the bridge. Many of the guards and the barbarians were killed instantaneously, but a couple fled on horseback to the north, and one or two more sought refuge in a nearby watchtower, pursued by some kind of undead serpent. Regre regrettably, Tatten's life could not be spared, but at his request, we granted him a peaceful death and set our sights on locating the other survivors. Bashing our way through the watchtower's door, we stormed the spiral staircase to the third floor, where we found the aforementioned bony snake attempting to ram its way into a locked room. We drew its attention and began a full assault as it used every bit of power at its disposal to dispatch us. Lightning strikes, skeleton reinforcements, and a shower of sharp bone missiles that incapacitated our wizard briefly before Graven set his healing magic upon her. With a great crash of her mighty flail, Bazaar executed the creature and brought stillness to the tower, allowing us time to enter the sealed chamber, where, against all odds, we came face to face with Jillian Casiva. What information would Jillian have about her time spent as a captive by the Black Lion Barbarians? Would she be in any condition to resume our previous assignment regarding the Mykonid camps? And what were the odds that we'd be seeing some of that reward money anytime mm. soon? Oh. <laughs> we find out now on chapter 15 of A Peak Beneath the Veil. Bizarre stance. Feet planted, arms held at length, locked with the woman across from her. She presents herself with a kind of steadfast fortitude. Back straight, eyes locked, weapon at the ready but one can only do so much to hide the tells of being worn down both physically and mentally. Sort of regular breathing interrupted by quick intakes of air. She has a tight jaw that kind of stifles the impulse to wince from the pain of a number of minor injuries. You can see small pools of blood underneath her left arm and down by her hip. And clumps of dirt cling to her hair that she's pulled back and tied into a ponytail using a red strip of cloth. And you see the look of recognition wash over Jillian's face, and she takes a step up and forward out of her hiding spot behind the storage crates, and she lets go. Well, it would seem that whatever reward I was likely to receive from the gentle void pales in comparison to the value of your timely rescue. It is good to see you. It is. My apologies for not popping out at your request for aid, Lint. I'm afraid it was rather difficult to recognize your voice over the sound of my own private dance I was having in here. And she sort of motions over behind one of the crates where you peek up and over and see there's a black lion barbarian there, sort of gutted up into the ribs with sort of a foul shit yeah. sticking out of it. It is good to see you as well. I have to say, a lot of things were running through my mind, but the thought of seeing you all again, as she sort of peeks around the door and sees a couple other people coming through the entrance, that did not cross my mind. Is anyone else with you? No, not up here. How are things on the ground? Grim, I would imagine. There's not 
I didn't see any survivors. We met one survivor who told us of, um, he saw someone run into the tower, which is why <laughs> we came. How did you survive the blast? Uh, now this one caught sight of me, uh, making a run for it, decided to pursue. Luckily for me, his undead pet was a touch slow and has a hard time operating doors. And she sort of points over to the door that's been sort of pushed in at this point. It would appear that I deserve a pat on the back for assembling a team with such tenacity. I am aware that you tracking me down was not done entirely out of love, but for whatever your reasons, for now, it'll do. Robert Bastille assisted greatly in this. Uh, we received a lot of information from him when we expressed our desire to chase you down. Truly, we wouldn't be here without him. Robert is a friend. Uh, I am a little surprised he did not send anyone with you, but with the gentle void and their growing presence in all of the major cities, I can see him wanting to keep his head down. To answer your question, explosion came about when I was not in the cage. Luckily for me, I'd be feeling rather impaled at the moment. <laughs> the guards at the crossing stopped the wagon under some pretense that I could not ascertain. Tensions were high, but the Black Lions angrily permitted a search of the wagon if it would allow them on their way. I was shackled and led to the end of the bridge with my hands and feet bound, and then the blast came. A trunk of cobblestone struck my handler and I wrestled the key away from his limp body. Until you arrived, I had no guesses as to who set it off, but when I saw Vizora and Erlen's faces, I assumed it was an admittedly brutal part of your heroic rescue. Would I be wrong in that assumption? Incorrect in Does, that assumption, yes. Does we did seem, not set it off. Did the, what she just say seem to be the truth to me? Make an insight. Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two. She doesn't give away any any reason to. She doesn't give off any impl impression that she's lying. Um, there might be a little more to this. You've got sort of the bullet point details, but she doesn't. It doesn't strike you as anything, you know, off about what she tells you. You said you didn't set off the blast. <laughs> Soldier we spoke to who was dying outside told us that there weren't very many people who knew about this store of Necrosidium. To be completely honest, we thought you had a hand in it. <laughs> Rather unlikely given my captured situation. I'll tell you someone else who knew that it was there. Hmm? Robert Bastille. Did he send someone? Not that we, not that we know. know. We told him we were trying to rescue you and as far as we know, we were the only rescue effort, and we were, frankly, the, the, the plan was to, he sent word that the, um, to hold you up at the crossing, ah. and the plan was for us to intercept you here. It was a little suspicious that they held us here for so long. You're saying it was Robert's word that kept us at the bridge. Yes. It may have been. With the assumption that it would buy us enough time to... You've missed a lot. We've traveled to Urn um, for uh, two days, and so we were working from behind, and the hope was that by holding you up at the crossing, we would make up time and catch you. Well, I am thankful, and I am impressed. <laughs> I am happy to answer all of your questions, and I have more than a few of my own, but I... <laughs> humbly suggest that we do not do it here. Mm. At least one or two Black Lions survived the explosion and rode north. If they link up with friends of theirs, they will almost certainly return to reclaim their lost possessions. We have a carriage on the other side of the break in the, in, in the bridge. Not well, yes, possible. Also, we should go and check in on our friend. We also have a tied up Black Lion in it. You have a what? Are you out of your mind? We didn't know we didn't know what we were coming up against as we made it to the crossing. We didn't know if he would be an asset. 
All right. I suggest our first matter of business is walking down there and cutting his throat. Oh. Right. I don't think you quite understand how the Black Lions operate. We'll do elucidate, then. You're not going to get any information from him if that's what you're hoping. Didn't think so. It brings a Black Lion great shame to be taken captive. He will not be allowed back into his tribe. In addition, many Black Lions are marked for death. Do you know what that means? No. No. They volunteer to be a necromancer's pet in the afterlife. If this is the case, which I'm not sure that it is, He's a living beacon that could be trapped. What? Let's go. Well, let's go. We're going right now. Very well. And she sort of puts one hand on one of the crates to sort of guide her a little bit. And she sort of puts her hands out so as not to accept any help. And she sort of painfully takes a few steps forward. Are you all right? Do you need any healing? I should be all right for now. Save your energy. All right. Shall we? Yes. I'm going to first search the Black Lion Barbarian. That's in the room? That's dead in the room. Sure, yeah. make an investigation check. Uh, eight. You give him a quick pat down. Again, like some of the barbarian bodies that were outside the tower, they don't keep much on them. He's got the sword that you could pull out of him. It looks like he has another knife strapped down near his boot. Other than that, doesn't have much in the way of possessions. Um, was that like a small enough knife that I could sort of have it yeah, it's like, like a, a tool. Like a dagger, yeah. It's like it could be like used as a utility knife. Yeah, it's small. Great, I'm gonna take the small dagger. And you um, take it out, and it looks like at least you could take it off, but there's a little bit of red twine that's wrapped around it. Like the, the hilt of it, the handle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'd like to take that off. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, take, a, take a moment, you sort of pinch it. It's just a piece of twine. I'd also like to just sort of, you said there were a lot of boxes there in are. the room. I'd like to uh, search around, make How sure much time else. do you want to take? <laughs> How long does it take them walking at Jillian speed to get to the carriage, would I guess? Uh, you... Uh, ten, ten minutes? I mean... I'll take ten minutes. minutes. Okay, great. I'll so, join him in that, actually. Sure, make an investigation check. You can both roll and take the higher one. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I joined you, friend. Uh, that's a 19. 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> mm. There are some supplies in these boxes. It seems to be sort of basic... Um, sort of functional needs for the crossing. Some, a bunch of building materials, stone, timber, and clay. A number of arrows and bolts like um, that could be used. Uh, sacks, tankards, soap, candles. I mean, a lot of sort of basic necessities like that. You find a box that has a bunch of parchment paper in it. <gasps> How much? 40, 40 pieces of yeah. parchment paper. How many Good arrows? Uh, there's probably a bundle of maybe 50 total arrows. Parchment. I'm gonna grab the arrows. Sure. There's a few bed rolls, picks, shovels. No rams. <laughs> no portable rams. No rams. Only have one enough portable rams. Um, and some horse feed as well. Oh, I'll some take bags that. of How oats. Much? It's about uh, for your four horses. It would be about two days worth of feed for them. That's cool. If no. you were taking more horses, if you were planning on taking some of the black line horses, it would be less. But yeah, about three days for one. Uh, no evidence of uh, uh, anyone else other than the Black Lion and Jillian? You don't see anything? Okay. You can see some sort of marks of blood where it looks like Jillian and him sort of struggled before she set him down. But... Well, I found what I was looking for. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I've got some arrows. Good, I have paper. <laughs> so we've already let, like, we yeah, have... Yeah, you guys are, I mean, you, now you're exiting out yeah. the door of the watchtower with Jillian, so... Um, as they do this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'll stay right by her if it seems like she's... Uh, she sort of takes a look behind her as you guys are exiting and sort of... I wouldn't suggest we wait long too long, but if they'd like to take a look around, I suppose we can wait. Erlen's quick on his feet. We can make our way now. Very well. So, how are you? <laughs> Just fine, thank you. <laughs> Relieved. Of all of the people I expected to show up, you were probably last on my list. I like the element of surprise there, Jillian. <laughs> you did keep her in a trunk. My point exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose you came for the gold that I promised. The other things that I have to attend to as well. So Very well. I decided to help my friends. Friends, you say? Yes, friends. She sort of I'll gives Sophia and Graven a look. 
I have you to thank for that. You're welcome. Mm. Always happy to connect those who think similarly. <laughs> she has proven useful a number of times already, yes. I can see that. Jillian. Yes? Why did they take you? I think that's a story for when we're on the road and when everyone's here. That way we can all catch up at the same time. Sure. And she takes a look sort of at the bridge in its indestructive state, sort of getting a, you can tell that she's sort of getting a good look at it for the first time. When the explosion went off, maybe she, you know, took off quickly. There was a lot of smoke and so it doesn't look like we're going to be taking the carriage across, does it? Does not look that way, no. Back the way we came, then. Unless you have another suggestion. Is there somewhere else you think you'd like to head? I have a suggestion. Oh, God. It's not a great one, but in the absence of great ideas, one must resort to merely serviceable ones. Hmm. Sounds promising. What is it? Ever the wit, Safira. Blomatula lives within a reasonable traveling distance at a good pace. Hardly a welcoming man, but his property is as safe as you're likely to find in the area. Blom? The gentleman who has a big keep out sign Mm -hmm. on his property. That sounds familiar, yes. Do you, have you met him before? Um, yes. (laughs) And do you think the sign would apply to you? It's been a while since I've seen Blom. So I suppose we're going to find out. I think we might. <laughs> it is already getting dark. I think traveling longer than that would put us in considerable danger. But I'm willing to consider other options if you've got them. There is one other realistic option, heading north to Radira. It's a grove, about a day's travel away, that is a day on horseback, and it is to the north, meaning we'd be leaving the carriage behind. It's an elven settlement. It's managed to survive their close proximity to the Sharky Mountains for many years, so they must be doing something right. But again, that's leaving an awful lot behind. That's a day's travel from right here. Yes. And again, we need to rest on horseback. Yes, we need, we need to rest. If you think there's any chance that we would find respite at Bloms. Worth a shot? Worth a shot. And by now, Erland and Orba have made their way down. Shall we all reconvene at the carriage? Are you ready to jump over a river? I think I can summon the strength. I can help. Which is sort of... You guys make your way in that direction. And given that you sort of understand how to get across, you guys all sort of made your way across, you are able to sort of show her the way. And there's some of the fatigue of the long day setting in, now dipping into darkness, sort of the fading light of the evening. And the noise of the flowing river seems to be picking up a little bit for what it's worth. Maybe the some of the wreckage is sort of gotten loose and some of the flow of the river has continued a little stronger and most of the smoke has kind of dissipated and there's just sort of crackling wooden beams, a little bit of cinders glowing in the night. And you're able to sort of maneuver your way across. You show her, she sort of takes Graven's arm at one point to slide down and she sort of winces on the other side as she takes two people's hands and kind of pulls herself up on the other side. And you guys return to the carriage. Who's going where? Who's driving? Um, I want to immediately check the, the Black Lion guy. Sure. I want to go into the carriage and kind of... Sure, like so Severa takes like through. a couple steps ahead. I can continue driving. Sure, yeah. And so Bizarre sort of makes a line for the yeah. driver's seat. Take out a knife and hand it to you as you... Yeah. And, and as I you... Kind of, yeah, I kind of like look at him and, and I'll take it. And as you sort of approach the carriage, it's dark, but you can see that he's awake and that he has, he's tied up nice and tight, but you can see that he has tried to sort of toss himself out the window. And he's kind of, and he hasn't been able to, but you see his head kind of poke out a couple times as he seems to be sort of pushing his way up against the window. Okay, 
Okay, so I, I see that he's awake, and where is Jillian? At this? She's all the way back, she's far She's away. like, if you went a little bit ahead, Graven is kind of helping her to the other side of the broken down part of the bridge. Or was peeking over Sephira's shoulder. And sure. he's sitting in the in the carriage, right? So he's sitting yep. like on, I'm, I'm assuming there are like two opposite benches mm-hmm. and he's sitting. Yeah. He's Can I sit on the bench opposite him? Sure, you still open the carriage. And he sees you come in and he kind of... And he stops for a moment and he looks at you. There's no way to communicate with him. I thought you were going to cut his throat. If you don't want to do it, I'll do it. (laughs) Um, Isn't Jillian nearby? Hmm? Jillian's nearby, yeah. She's nearby, yeah. Yeah. She's being sort of gotten helped up onto the other side. Is there a particular way in which we ought to dispose of him that will not allow him to be necromanced or not allow them to track him? We could burn him. The river looks fine to me. That. We're just going to kill this man defenseless, all tied up? If you let him go, he'll be killed by his own. Can I hear them talking about this, even though I'm not far? Sure. Can we make a decision? I'd like to get moving. I'm going to start to go toward the end, like, sure. to go pick him can up. I, can I kind of, like, stop yeah. him for a second? What's the, what's the trouble with letting him be killed by his own? Let him go Reanimation, back. Reanimation, information about us, what each what one of us looks like, everything. He, he knows everything. And you think the Black Lions are going to track us to the next place we're going? Jillian was obviously a very important target to them. Jillian? I'm going to I'm going to take my knife and just start to go and start to cut his throat. Go for it, Graven. Uh, wait, uh, 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 <laughs> not, not in our carriage. I don't want to sit in that for the travels. Okay, fine. And bring and him you grab him. You sort Can of I... pull him up by the ropes, and he kind of flops out. Drag him out. Sure. You sort of down off. He sort of hits the doom step and then down to the ground. Um. And under the chin. <clears throat> and he looks at you for a second and he looks like he's struggling a little bit and then he kind of. Be at peace. Uh, Orba holds his hand. And he kind of fades out and slumps to the side after. The river you think is good enough? I'd rather not take the time to burn him. We'd call attention gonna, to ourselves as well. I'm gonna take there the are a number of other bodies in the river as well, after the explosion. Not with the throats that. Well, who's going to be digging? I'm gonna take the ropes off of him. Sure. And collect and those. And you start to leave the limbs kind of limply and fall out. And drag him to the river. Sure. Takes. And Jillian gives a little hand. She's sort of a little <laughs> gimped, but she takes it up, and the two of you kind of. And it. Sort of goes in the bar. You can see the body. It's dark, but you can kind of see the body start to move. Shall we go meet your friend? Let's go. I think we should. Where are we heading? Remember a friend of mine. We pass she on the way of... up that says keep <laughs> out. That's where. Blom. A friend. Out of curiosity, I'm not saying we do this right now. How far away is Mukmu from here? Mukmu is probably at least two days, and that would be with some sort of transportation. We, the carriage wouldn't. We need to arrest her. I, I understand that the carriage won't take us. That would be if we're across the river, two days from the crossing. If we follow the river with the carriage, you're going far out of the way. Uh, the west crossing. My plan is to go to Blom's, and he does have a path out the back of his property. The path meets back up at the Bukhara River, and you can take that all the way up to the lake, right next to Mukmu, and we can go to Mukmu from there. It's a longer journey, but we'll keep the carriage, and hopefully have somewhere safe to stay for the night. We do need rest. Are you sure we're able to get in? No. We can only try. Well, I suppose we'll give it our best shot. Should we go without weapons? To Blom's? Yes. Oh. Or at least not. I wouldn't go wielding weapons. Right. I doubt Blom will be expecting visitors. I think if we approach slowly and come with good intentions, we stand a chance. What's he do? He's a druid. And he fought in the war. Now he prefers to live alone. Solitude. I see. Do we have anything to offer him for respite? That depends. How well did you 
search my carriage after I rode off a couple days ago. Incidentally, we did find three keys. Yes. What were they for? One of them was for my lockbox. <coughs> one of them was for the cage on the back of the carriage. And one of them I plan to give to Blom. <coughs> and what would that one be for? Perhaps we should start our journey and we can go over all the details. Motion her into the carriage. Sure. And and get she gets in. up into the main portion of the carriage. So Bazaar's gonna go up to the front. <coughs> We're ready then. Hopefully. Jillian, isn't it funny? I'm driving you now. <laughs> yes. Very funny. <laughs> um, Orbit just counts the number of people because there's four in the carriage, and so she goes and sits well, on I'm with... inside the carriage. Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay. All right. Have you sat in the carriage yet? I'm, I'm sitting in the carriage. I was sitting on the You're sitting in the carriage. Uh, I'm going to hop in the back of the carriage then. So in the carriage, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Last or, for dodgeball. I, I, can I kind of see more about the window? Like, no, I want to sit up in the front, and I kind of like. No, no, no. no. Just waves her away and goes. So, Orb is going to sit on the front? Yeah, or in the um, carriage? No, it's cl- you guys are the team, so I go and sit in the front. Orb joins Bazaar on the driver's bench. In the carriage. You untie the horses and start to move. And it's. Getting dark now, the darkness, and there is sort of a lantern that hangs off of a little hook on the front of the carriage that mm-hmm. you know you can turn it up a little bit in the light, the oil lantern. It gives off a decent bit of light. You're able to sort of see the path in front of you. It's hard to see beyond that unless a few people have dark vision here. The people who have dark vision can see a little further. And you start to make your way along the river, sort of back now with the river, alongside the Picara River, heading back towards the woods. Where to begin? Why not start from the end? What happened as you rode off? I suppose it makes sense to start on that road outside of Urenchupa where I left you. Please speak up. Hard to hear over the horses, and we would love to hear the story. Of course. I chased the surviving Noel Witherling up over a ridge into a wooded area that was still able to navigate it on horseback. It quickly became apparent that despite my mounted advantage, I was failing to gain on the creature. It was being hasted by an external source, magic beyond the expertise of a typical Noel shaman, let alone a mere witherling. I was worried, but I was more worried that this scout would be able to report back to its master. I did not believe that the gnolls were merely ambushing travellers along a random road, and of course I doubly do not believe that now. I entered into a clearing where a number of travellers had set up camp, and they were frightened by the undead gnolls storming through, but I was not a fool. I know the effects of the seeming spell when I see it, especially when cast by a mediocre mage and I dispatched of four of the travelers before they overwhelmed me. Barbarians, disguised as travelers. Black lions who obviously had an interest in not being recognized as they traveled south to apprehend me. Where were these travelers? In the woods, perhaps 10, 15 minute chase from where I left you. Did they tell you anything about what they were doing in the woods? They did not. I believe their intention was merely to appear innocent and get in close enough to capture me. They did not speak. A black lion's particularly skilled at magic? Not typically, and those that are mostly necromantic arts. So someone's helping them? It crossed my mind. You were taken 15 minutes after we saw you. It was not long. I was walked quite a ways. We arrived at a carriage waiting for us on some provisional road a bit northwest of where we started. After I was locked in a cage, they mostly kept a cloth draped over it so I couldn't get my bearings. I didn't have a good idea of where they were taking me until I heard the waters of what I assumed was the Bukhara River. I have to say I learned very little in my days of captivity. 
I don't speak their tongue, and any attempt to communicate earned me a quick strike across the face. The only information of possible value is that one evening, the carriage came to a halt alongside another vehicle. They conducted some kind of exchange, speaking barbarian, of course. But at the end, I heard a man's voice say, Havasa Marat Uyatar, not the barbarian tongue. Three words from a dead language that you only hear spoken in proverbs up near the northern colonies. If I remember correctly from my studies, the phrase means a greater life from death. Favorite words of ambitious necromancers. After that, we proceeded to the crossing where we stalled out. And like I said, the explosion gave me an opportunity to flee. Have you interacted with the Black Lion tribes before? Yes, but nothing like this. They do occasionally exchange goods, and during the war they were sometimes hired as mercenaries, although they're volatile and prone to going back on their word. I never used them myself, but I know that it happens, or happened. Do, do they have any connection to my knit camps? Why, why were they interested in you? Do you have any idea? Until recently, I would not have known. But like you said, a suspicious, renewed interest in my involvement. It crossed my mind that someone had hired them to apprehend me because of my disrupting their business. But why they would get the Black Lions to do that, I don't know. So you really have no idea why they wanted you? No, thankfully. You came to my rescue before I was able to find that out. Does that seem entirely honest to me? You can make an inside check. So suspicious. 18. 18. She seems to be relaying the details as she knows them. She's laying out a lot of facts and nothing strikes you as dishonest and nothing strikes you as inconsistent with things that you've heard yeah. so far. Who else knows about your crusade against the Magnet camps? A lot of people. A lot of people? Well... Armand Valiard knows, and Robert Bastille knows, and everybody knows them. <laughs> Not that I'm saying they're bad secret keepers, but I ask them for recommendations, resources, supplies. Would not be out of the ordinary for a number of their associates to be at least rudimentarily familiar with what I'm doing. Was there anyone else you asked to join you other than, well, I suppose only the three of us? that refused you? No. I had a list that I picked from, but everyone that I asked agreed. There was only one person that was added to the list that was not my own name, a suggestion of Armand's. And what name was that? Safira. Wait, so this man you didn't know recommended you for this? He seemed to be quite insistent that you'd be a valuable member of my team. So far, he hasn't proven me wrong. So, did you know Armand? <laughs> okay. Is she telling the truth? Can I? Can I make an <laughs> Here we go. The, the mistrust I begins. know, I know. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> you were on the front of the carriage. <laughs> right, I couldn't hear her. <laughs> she said no? She said no. <laughs> I was like, did she say, do we believe that she's, okay. <laughs> One. Yeah. Wow. It's what? hard It's hard to get a very She doesn't, she didn't Man. say much either, so it's hard. I think my ears are clogged. <laughs> Incidentally. Sounds good. <laughs> Incidentally, I suppose now is as good a time to any to ask, why we were selected, and what exactly it is you intend to do. As of now, assuming nothing has changed fundamentally, I plan to resume the mission. You're really gonna turn me in? 
That was not the mission I'm speaking of. <laughs> the Mykonid camps, of course. It is perhaps even more important now that we find out exactly what's going on. So you believe that your capture was linked directly to your crusade on Mykonid camps? I have no other reason to suspect at the moment. Is I, there something you'd like to tell me? I suspect this isn't the first Mykonid camp you've come across, or it the first Mykonid camp you've attempted to scout and destroy? No. I've done this several times. And have you attracted suspicion or capture or attack such as this previously? No. No one in my employ has ever been captured until now. And how does the gentle void feel about you shutting down their camps? I imagine they do not like it, but they do what they do, and I do what I do. They continue to make money, and I continue to do what I think is right. Speaking of the gentle void, as we reach out to Blom, you should know, we no longer have your gentle void favor. And she takes a moment and looks at you. And she looks like if she wasn't hurting, might m move towards you. You what? It's gone. It's gone. What exactly did you do with it? What exactly? We used it to prevent ourselves from getting killed. Is that not a good enough answer for you? And what exactly did you do for the Gentle Void to earn it? The Gentle Void has had a presence for a long time, including during the war, when I was an operative. As an operative, you are required to remain neutral. You cannot favor a certain party or political entity. I was paid the favor for a mission. The details of that mission are private to me, and it has nothing to do with you. But the fact that you gave it away is somewhat of a concern. Although luckily for you at this moment, that's not what I planned on giving to Blom. It was what going was to come up at some point anyway. It? My so plan for know. what? The favor. Yes, because when it was utilized, they said that it was from pretty high up. So who was it for? It is from pretty high up. Who was it? I'm not going to tell you that. What if I say please? I'm definitely not going to tell you that. Jillian, read Orba. I remember. Hi. I would say I'm equally as surprised to see you as the halfling, but you seemed an inquisitive sort. Mm -hmm. What brings you along? Well, you know, you did offer us some gold, and I got your friends to Orange Chupa safely, so... You did. She's been more than helpful. Thank you. I'll see to it that you're paid when we reach a city. Okay, and you know, if you ever need any extra hands, I don't know if you're hiring, but you know. I am not. Okay. So who was it? Why don't you tell me what you all have been doing in this time? We met with Robert Bastille as, well, we went to the Dancing Clan as instructed. There we met with Robert Bastille and waited for quite some time for you until it was apparent that you were not going to come. You were captured before you could see um, a festival ground that night. I don't believe I saw such a thing. No. The Festival of Umasu? Yes, that's the one. I know of it. It happens outside of Urenchupo every year, every other year. I'm not sure. Never attended. Does the name Winston Muldoon mean anything to you? And she sort of laughs a little bit and smiles. Winston Muldoon. You mean former operative. Winston Muldoon. Oh my god. I will say this. I can't wait for the day that that name only makes me laugh. Would you like to tell me how you came into contact with Winston Muldoon? He was there, at the festival. Partying? He lied to us. 
We believe that he was the reason that those gnolls appeared. You think that Winston Muldoon brought the gnolls? I believe that Winston Muldoon... Had a hand in it. ...opened a pathway to allow the gnolls to come through. Winston Muldoon has showed up... More than once. He had powerful enough magic to, to, you said seeming earlier. Yes. Yes, that's the spell that he used in the basement. He used a seeming spell to make gnolls look like humans and ambushed us at one point. Winston Muldoon is powerful, no doubt. Working with gnolls and the undead. I'm not sure how he fits into all of this. Well, well, neither do we. If we found a chamber underground at the festival. It seemed there was a substance there that we didn't recognize. Some kind of machine. There was a number of things we didn't recognize. There was the black and green ink. There was... Uh, describe, I'll describe the glass yeah, vessel yeah, to describe it. Describe what you saw. In the We've seen it two different occasions. One time with a mist just dissipating and the other time with a mechanical operation that may have been pumping into the ground or back out. Both that times sounds... directly near our transportation circle. Some kind of an underground network. Perhaps. They're connected to one another. We found another one when we got into the city in Orange Chupa in the grotto. Mm-hmm. There seemed to be some kind of a lecture hall. People were sleeping down there. Toenail trimmings, <laughs> which were getting analyzed, possibly. <laughs> The magic of it is beyond my expertise. Perhaps we should talk to someone who might have a better idea of what that would mean. Is this druid friend of yours somewhat of an expert? You could ask him, but I doubt it. Yeah. More of a natural expert, not magical, mechanical. You said there was a device. Yes, large, mechanical. You, you don't... It doesn't ring any bells for you, nothing to do with from Mycodid camps. Not that I've seen. The Mycodid extract, what form does it usually take? They usually melt it down. And it can be drunk? Typically, yes. What color? Sort of a bluish liquid. You've never seen it in the mist form? I suppose it's possible, but no. Winston Muldoon, when we met him at the festival, mentioned that a tiefling man approached him to do this. Tiefling man handed him a box. And incidentally, a tiefling man also approached us uh, as a member of the Gentle Void. And, and, and boy, this is a whole other story. The wine tasting in Orange We managed to sneak into the Mullafer estate. <laughs> Sounds lovely. You've been quite busy. Apparently. I was invited. <laughs> yes, anyways, I do believe that the, <laughs> the tiefling man... I have a hunch the tiefling man that approached Winston Muldoon was the te- same tiefling man from the Gentle Void that approached us. It seems like too much of a coincidence otherwise. Seems that the Gentle Void has been busy. Busier than I thought. I also... Yes. What is your relationship with Rob Bastille? What would you like to know? I believe... Seems particularly partial to you. I believe that his life may be in danger. There's not much we can do in our Chupa to help him anymore. Is there something we can do? I would like to return the favor. We are not... We left our Chupa and are not the best. Um, there was a... How to say... Um, a lot of things went wrong while we were in Orange Local Chupa. law enforcement probably isn't our greatest fan. So right? Robert Bastille, as we were trying to rescue you, pretended to banish us from the city. And after the Gentle Void got word of that, I was approached and asked to double-cross him in some way. Graven was there with me. You think they're looking for a greater influence in the city? I believe, yes, that's what the member said when he approached me. Or perhaps they've already got it. I notified Robert that this was happening, but I don't know how much longer he can hold the city. Robert has a few tricks up his sleeve. Wouldn't give up on him just yet. Tricks up his sleeve? Like the explosion? That couldn't have been Robert the Steel. 
Then who was it? I have no idea. Does it not matter to you? It who matters. Did that? There are many other things. There are many things that matter to me right now, and there's not much we can do about a mysterious explosion. I was looking right at Jillian when I said, "I'm like, you know, does does it not matter to you?" It does, but there are greater things at play. I believe. Greater things at play, like the gentle void might be trafficking in Mike and its solution. Is that what you're suggesting? I think that's looking increasingly likely. Yes. And Winston so Muldoon? Listen to me. Black and white are coward's colors. Do not make the mistake that I once did of wearing them as a badge of honor. We operate in the gray, and that is why we survive. Yes, yes I am seen sad. I've exactly what operating in the gray looks like. I am sad that those at the crossing have passed, but... We have the chance to do a lot of good here. And it seems that you all are quite in the thick of it, and I am thankful for that. What do you know of the Shade Assembly? I know a lot about the Shade Assembly, but very little I can tell you unless you give me a reason why. Hmm. I'm... Looking to become an operative, are you? Do you happen to know if there are any transportation circles still in operation around Shade? The Shade Assembly. Specifically, does the Shade Assembly still exist? Is it not raised to the ground as the stories tell? Well, if it is, I'll have to tell them that the next time I see them. I imagine they'll be concerned. They're very much still there. I thought as much. And yes, there is a transportation circle in Finlock Forest. Is it active? As far as I know. Do you know what the code is? I could show it to you, yes. Okay. Maybe when we reach our destination, I would like to see that. Your friends in the Shade Assembly, they operate within the same code of this area of grey, as you describe. Do you think that it's possible that one of them, maybe several of them, might be involved in the trafficking of Mike and its solution? I would be surprised, but the organisation is bigger than you might think. I do not have tabs on every one of them. This is a crusade of yours and not theirs. Yes. The, we have no actual specific information, but it feels like every path we follow somehow ends up in Finlock Forest. So you'd like to go there? At some point, yes. I believe we have more pressing things. We've uh, received a warning. A warning that we might think we might be able to trace back to Grimari's assistant. In Mokmo, yes. Rujeni Grimari, the author. Yes. Yes. Well, that's his name. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> we, we don't know if that has anything to do with this at all. Honestly. I would suspect that it does. I, well, we don't know how though. The transportation circle that we saw in. My goodness. <laughs> uh, we, we encountered um, the, the second um, underground device. Uh, device we found was in the Brick Rock area of Orenshupa. There were undead and ankegs that had been uh, overrunning it, and we found this auditorium. If, if not sent there, then disturbed. There was... Ankegs in the city? Yes. 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 Unusual. Do you know Dietrich Lightwhistle? I know of him. I know of the light whistles, of course. What do you know of the Light Whistles? Very rich, powerful family from Presidium. Mostly judges, as far as I know. That's what we'd heard as well. Someone um, was murdered down Dietrich in the grotto. Dietrich Light Whistle was murdered down in the grotto by a man who attacked me and then used a transportation circle to Escape travel to a beach. somewhere near a beach. And you believe that might be Finlock Forest? I hear there are beaches and transportation circles. There are, but the transportation circle is not on the beach. Mm-hmm. Do you know of any transportation circles near the beach? Any of the coastal cities, perhaps? There might be one in Pachacama, or Dilasun, maybe Navikapura. I'm not sure if they've upgraded to that level of technology at this point. It takes a lot of resources. It's also very heavily regulated not allowed to just create one on your own. No, you're not. But we've seen it happen twice now. Do you know... We know of at least two transportation circles in our Chuba. Two unlicensed. Two unlicensed ones. One which will have been destroyed. That's right. One owned by the law affairs and one 
that we found underground. I doubt they're the same given where Brick Rock is and where the Mall of Fair estate is. No, I yes. doubt it. And the one that's in the Mall of Fairs was created by your man Winston Muldoon, which he then later used to rob the Mall of Fairs of something. He has quite popped up a bit. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. he seems to continue popping up. He has an annoying habit of doing that. Feels like several things keep popping up and we can't quite figure out how they all connect to each other, but Mike and it extract does seem to be at the centre of it. I'm hung up on the lecture hall. It was a lecture hall underground. Why? Do you think it's possible that Grimari, someone like him, an academic, is producing zealots to help him traffic using an underground network? There's something... Well, I'm not saying you're wrong, but that's quite a theory. Who knew we were staying at the Dancing Clam other than yourself and Rob at the Steel? Armand knows that I stay there. The specifically the rooms that you booked for us, who knew? I use the same rooms every time, usually. Well, should perhaps think about switching it up a little bit, perhaps? I think I need to add a few more preparations and precautions to my usual routine. So outside of Armand, Robert, and yourself, who knows? The bookkeepers at the dancing clan? Hmm. Someone knew. When we went down under the festival, under the, the fountain, GGGP216 was written on the wall. A cipher, you think? Uh, a reference to a page no. in the gr- in it Grimari's giant a grimoire. Specific page in Grimari's giant grimoire, and which talks about Mike and extract. Not in always. The, well, in the first edition of the book, it does. Who who knows about it? I don't, we don't know about the page. That's true. Yeah. When that book was published, Mike and extract was not widely known. It must have been Armand who sent us the warning. He was the only... I don't know if you know this, GGG also turned up at the wine tasting. Oh my goodness. Where? On a cocktail napkin of some sort. The only person... Oh, the... <laughs> I... It... it... You found <laughs> lying so around? It was to you. Precus, yes. Yes. It's the... Oh, you got to talk to Precus? A little bit, I'm yes. a big fan, he's a good writer. Lovely. The, it, Armand... <laughs> Both knew that we were staying at the clan and was present at the Mall of Her Wine Tasting. I don't know why he would be so cryptic. We met him, by the way. Lovely man. Lovely is an adjective. I'm glad to hear it. Um, Also assisted in information that was necessary in finding you. Slightly less empathetic to your condition than Robert is. He can seem that way, but Armand is typically... Reliable on most accounts. We found that as well. I think he takes pleasure in knowing how reliable he is. That sounds like I'm on. <laughs> and as you guys are talking, the carriage kind of veers to the left a little bit. And it's reuniting you with the sort of familiar closed-in feeling of the haunted sort of woods area that you guys have passed through. Though the eerie atmosphere, it doesn't quite have the same sort of deafening silence that it had once before. The smell is no longer quite as overpowering, and there's a reduction in the piles of sort of bone and flesh along the sides of the road. And Jillian kind of peers out the window at a couple of these, and you traveled through here once before, did you? We were lucky enough to have one of their whistles. Whistles? Did you not hear them raising the dead while you traveled before? That was quite a bit of noise. Kind of hard to notice. I did not. You didn't smell it either. It often smells terrible in the world, <laughs> especially when I haven't bathed in quite some time. Nice. <laughs> we ran into the undead. Are we going to be safe? Well. I think we've struck some kind of a bargain with them. If they're not on us right now, I think we'll be be okay. Good to know. 
She sort of sits uneasily in the carriage, sort of as some of it passes by. She said you struck some kind of agreement. She's sort of looking out the window. It wanted the whistle. Ah. It exchanged a spell scroll for it. That's the help. When I gave it the whistle, it seemed to disappear, like the magic binding it no longer existed. And it's not long before you come upon, on the road, a few spirits no longer sort of skulking behind the trees and fading in and out of existence, but marked by sort of a dull pinkish-purple glow. It doesn't, like, give off light, but you are able to see them in the darkness. And their features are more distinguishable now than ever before. You can act like a man, an elf, a woman, a tiefling, and each one sort of seems preoccupied with their own business. They sort of stop to track the carriage as it moves by before resuming their meandering. And a number of them seem to be sort of quietly and dutifully digging with their hands. They sort of kneel down and are digging in the dirt. And you spot one of them walking over to a freshly dug hole with sort of arms full of butchered remains, some of the debris on the side of the road. And it proceeds to go down on one knee and pour it into the hole before... Oh. Sort of covering it up and burying some of the remains. It seems like they're sort of working their way down, pushing the remains. And Jillian sort of watching them. They don't seem hostile in any case. I would imagine the necromancer's influence has passed. Well, necromancy is a trademark of the Black Lions. Some find it an uneasier sight than others. And one of the spirits, a young elven girl, she sort of catches Orba's attention as she's like waving out the window. And the girl walks alongside the carriage for a moment before sort of getting close and offering up a small sort of spectral flower that she hands up to you. Orba slowly, just be Caref- careful. Careful, Orba. She's going to be nice. Hold it. You take it. And I nod. And she like brings her hands down and watches you as you're sort of moving by. And it seems to sort of materialize in your hand, sort of like the spell scroll, so if you're before it turns from sort of a misty into a solid object, sort of white petals with these black tips, and they kind of spiral around sort of a light green central point that pokes out from the center. Mm. And as you hold it, the spirit girl, she makes eye contact with you. And though her mouth doesn't move, you're able to hear words in your head. Like someone sort of whispering it to you as you're sleeping or falling asleep. And she says, They will come back to reclaim the desecrated ground. Be careful. And she starts to fade. And the carriage keeps moving and she stays standing still. Mama nods and says, Thank you very much. And as you speak, you see her sort of delighted by your understanding. It seems, it seems to almost catch her by surprise that you were able to hear her words. And she smiles and sort of almost giggles a little bit. So we see all this, yeah, so we don't s- hear it. S- yeah. So sort of hearing her say thank you and seeing a kid delight, I'm just going to sort of... All the... Friend of yours. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, what she say? Hold on, one second. <laughs> You don't know that she said anything. Oh. Well, I said something. You saw the orbit say something to her. What did her. she give you? Um. Uh. Hmm. I can't, can't give her anything. <laughs> I want to give her something. Um. Orba. I wish I could give you something as sweet as you are, but. Please be at rest. And she smiles and sort of tilts her head. And her head sort of continues to tilt Mm. and it reaches sort of Mm. an unnatural Mm. angle before it seems to kind of detach entirely and her face sort of swirls into disfigurement almost as if circling a drain and the other members of the party don't see this from your perspective Orba's sort of maintaining eye contact with the girl who's just sort of standing there motionless you can see Orba and you can see the spirit, but you can't yeah. see this transformation happening. Uh-huh. 
and the face sort of reforms into an undead visage, unlike anything you've ever seen before. Sort of chunks of flesh sliding off of this partially eroded skull. And one of the eye sockets seems riddled with what appear to be barnacles. And the face sort of fixates on you for a moment. And it sort of has a raspy kind of laugh. Sort of... (laughs) And it fades. And then it swirls back in the other direction. (sighs) Returns to the girl's face. And the carriage continues to move. So she, you're on top of the. She's on top of the carriage. She's literally Wind. leaning out the window, Orba. I, yeah. Oh, I thought you were in the front. She's in the front. Oh, then you're yeah. leaning yeah, off yeah, to the leaning. side. <laughs> so her. probably the only person who see her, see her reaction is me. You. So you can see Orba sort of watching back, but nobody nobody sees any of this happen. And the girl returns to her normal form, and then she turns away and begins to walk in the. Other How way. can I help you? She doesn't respond. Orba, what's the oh. matter? Or just like strangling the flower in her hand after watching all of that. Erlen looks at Jillian. She's not normally like this. What do you That's got there? Good to know. Um, one of one of the spirits just gave me a flower. Um, I don't really understand what just happened. To be quite honest, I would like to get out of this area as quickly as possible. Did she say something to you? She said that the. Necromancers are probably going to come back and that we should stay safe and get out quickly, so let's please take her word for it. How far away is Bloms from this place? A few hours, perhaps? I'll speed up the carriage. Far enough away that we'll be safe there. I would hope so. Safe from the spirits, you mean? I'm not worried about the spirits, I'm worried about the black lines returning. I don't know if there's much of a difference, to be quite honest. Like I said, Blom is odd, but his property is probably safe. Probably safe is the best we've got right now, I suppose. I would agree. Everyone stay inside the carriage, then. I wasn't planning on getting out. <laughs> she sort of watches some of the other spirits go by. Oh, did we think how we left the two other horses back there, didn't we? Oh, uh, yes, can I kind of look around and, and do I recognize the spirit that like <coughs> negotiated with me, that handed me the... Make a perception check. <coughs> Um, ten. Ten. You don't. It, it, it's again. A lot of the spirits have taken more sort of solidified, mm. recognizable <laughs> forms, and right. the one that you saw had not come into that. Okay. He was sort of a misty kind of sort of general shapes of a face. So it's nobody looks like that. So it's hard to tell. Are there any spirits that uh, I recognize as like people who I may have known that died? Make a history check. Mm-hmm. Into the <laughs> Okay. Again. Nobody laughs. Negative. Nobody laughs. Negative two. You don't recognize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. I thought I got a good roll when you laughed. I couldn't tell. That didn't sound like a good laugh. <laughs> no, he's a lot more quiet on good rolls. That's true. Yeah. As I speed through, do I see any, like anything else other than spirits that I'm could like perception be possibly? Check as well, yeah. That's mine. I did. Like, the sparkly one did. Got my good roll. Stole it. It's insight, right? No, uh, uh, perception. Perception, sorry. Um, 19. 19. You are sort of moving through, and you guys have made pretty good time through this, whereas the first time you went through, you were moving through very slowly mm-hmm. from the whistle, you're sort of waiting. And you're making good time, and the only thing you start to see is the remains of the sort of watchtower that lit on fire before, as before. So you're getting sort of so. out of... The me. first coming from yeah. the, yes. last, last, the, last the last one. We one. So it yes. like marks the end of Yeah, so you, you you get the impression that you were leaving what was the desecrated ground area because you can spot that. And uh, now we're getting into the thicker forest area. Yeah, so this was, yeah, the, the haunted part of the woods was still part of the thicker forest, but yeah. Okay. But yes. I think we might be out of the thick of it. Yes, well here's hoping. Do you recognize this portion of road here, Jillian? It is dark, but if we're following the main road from the crossing, yes, I've been here before. The Black Lions burned. They had two scouts come back towards us and burn all of the lookout towers. Covering their tracks, it would seem. I got the impression that when they were stopped at the crossing, that they did not take lightly to that. It's possible that they sent a few people 
backwards to cover their tracks in case they wish to attack. Yes, I think that's uh, our friend that we had kept in the carriage seemed to be one of those unlucky fellows. Well, onwards then. I asked this before. Why? Outside of Sephira, why us? You had a list of ten people? I had a list of a few, yes. I tend to target people for a number of qualifications. One, I generally for, prefer to work with people not from Antisuyu, if I can help it. I find that it causes less conflicts of interest. Second, I tend to target people who have strong motivation that I can help with, either monetarily or some kind of information. I try not to keep things so strictly business that they would not be especially motivated on these missions. Obviously, you all, in coming to find me, believe that I can help you. I believe the same. And you believe the other people on the list do not fit those qualifications? Or they fit some of them, but not others. I found you to be my ideal candidates. A pleasure. <laughs> Anything else? You know, Jillian, maybe you and I should have a sit-down talk, because I bet if you got to know me a little bit, I would have found a way to get on your list pretty easily. <laughs> you seem resourceful. I could see that as a possibility. You all also seem to work well enough together to rescue me at the crossing. I'm willing to consider additional payment or help, but you should understand exactly what we're in for. I plan to continue and go to this Mykonid camp, but given these extenuating circumstances, I will give you the opportunity to bow out, all of you, or some of you, and I will pay you for the time rendered up until this point. It is to my understanding that this might be a bigger mission than we originally anticipated. Hmm. Good see. When does... The two people in the front, when does that... When will you be able to get them their payment for escorting us to the dancing clan? If we reach Mukmu, I have a considerable credit there. We'll be able to cover all of you, but if they wish to bow out at that point, I can pay them a hefty sum. We'll have to reach one of the major cities before I am able to compensate for a larger mission. Or in Chuba, Pachakama, Dilosun, Tuktu perhaps. Nabikapura. Nabikapura does not have the central banking kind of resources to pay out of that magnitude. Mm. It's a relatively new city. And would we be a part of the scouting mission, as initially discussed, or would we also be a part of the destruction? <laughs> Someone's been talking. <laughs> the plan is merely scouting at this point. It seems that we might be uncovering a lot of information that I was not ready for, but now I am ready. Afterwards, if I deem it possible even to destroy the camp without endangering significant lives, I'll move on to that part of the mission, which you are not obligated. In fact, I may choose to gather a group that has a different area of expertise. Not that you're not fit for combat, merely that I have specialists. So it's only a scouting mission at that, this point, and whatever you have promised us will, will be, be provided paid. upon the scouting mission. What kind of specialists? To put it bluntly, explosive specialists. Friends during the war. So that's how you destroy these camps, you blow them up. Usually. But we would not be a part of that 
No. And the mic that's inside them? They go with it. Do you think they prefer their situation as it stands? I'm sure they don't prefer it. I'm just wondering if that's the best way to dispose of them. If you think you've got a way to extract them from the camp before I blow it up, I'm all ears. I've never been to one of these camps. I've no idea what they look like. They're heavily guarded. Usually heavily guarded by whom? They're not run by one particular entity. I have gone to ones that are run by the Gentle Void, but it's not always them. Sometimes it's ragtag mercenaries. Sometimes it's governments. Is this particular one near Mukmo government run or Gentle Void run? Armand gave me the impression that it was not a government one. And there wasn't an indication that it was Gentle Void run, but again, circumstances have changed somewhat. And you still take Armand at his word? She thinks for a moment. Yes. Why do you have so much confidence in him? Why do you not? I'm sorry, was it not you that said it was the warning that was sent to us by Armand? Yes, it seems like that would be very helpful. In fact, the only thing that I question Armand about is your presence here. Why might that be? Yes, well, that's a story for another time. Oh, is it? <laughs> this seems extremely pertinent to this moment right now. We do have a couple hours. Armand is reliable. Tricky, but reliable. As an operative, you get a lot of friends and you lose a lot of friends. People think that neutral means whatever they want it to mean. But as soon as you go and help their enemies, all of a sudden, They don't understand. Armand understands. And we have remained in a lucrative and mutually beneficial business arrangement for quite some time. Unless I hear a reason otherwise, I've no reason to distrust him. It frankly concerns me that you are operating on some past prejudice against him that has no bearing on what's occurring right now. Well, first you tell the little one that you don't know Armand, and now you're telling us you have a lovely story about him. So which is it? I have a lovely story. You just said it's a story for another day, and moments ago you said you didn't know him. So which is it? Do you not know him, or are you postponing a conversation? I'm postponing a conversation. Well, no, I know him as much as you know him. I met him when we met him. So then what's the story that you postponed? Why would he know you so well? Hmm. If I knew the answer to that, then I'd happily elucidate. Does she know the answer to that based on what she's saying? Make an inside check. 17. She doesn't give away, she doesn't give you any reason to think that what she's saying is not true. (laughs) Stop smiling at (laughs) her! You jerk! I'm just smiling. (laughs) I'm having a great time. Um, while the volume like kind of picks up in the carriage between these two, yeah. uh, Orba's gonna give like a slight nudge to Bizarra and like whisper. Um, <coughs> are you going to try to join us? Them? Me? Maybe? I don't know. I've avoided talking to her right now. I don't know whether she could possibly have those um, chess pieces I'm looking for as well. Yes, well, it seems like, I mean, aside from what we talked about earlier, she's an enemy of the Gentle Void as well. So maybe you two have more common ground than you think. That's what I've been thinking. Since I saved her life, maybe she won't turn me in and get what her reward was. It sounds like she doesn't want to anymore. I have to speak with her privately. I think you should. Maybe when we reach our destination. Okay. Thank you, Orba. Mm Mm-hmm. And you reach the point on the road where the sign for Blom's property marks a dingy little trail that sort of rambles off into the distance. And you notice this time around that the sign is actually positioned 
in the center of the path, <laughs> which means that you can't drive. The, someone has to get out, put, pick up the sign. I'll and get move off. It. I'll get off. Then. Right. One moment. <laughs> like I read it, wait, and I'm it like, wasn't before. Mm. No, it was. You just didn't really. You weren't planning on going down the path, so you didn't really oh, notice. Oh, I notice what now. What does the like, sign say? Keep Blom's out. property. Keep, keep out. out. I like pick it up, and I'm like, it says keep out. I'm just gonna move it, and then just put it on the side. Jillian kind of leans out the window. I'm sure he won't mind. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh and then I get back on and just go down the drive. So you start to move, and you haven't gone far before the humidity seems to have risen considerably. Yikes! And the sounds of crickets start to fill the air, and the hooves of the horses have this ever so slight sort of like squishing quality to them. Evidence of kind of moist ground in this area that seems like it's becoming marsh-like. I was gonna say marshy. Yeah, it kind of has. I really was. I thought a few parts of the path, as the carriage approaches, you can see have been reinforced with some thick wooden beams or pieces of stone that allow the path to continue over these sort of uneven ground. And you can see sort of pools of water on the sides, the sort of lamplight in the front reflecting off some of the water. And the grass and the reeds sort of rapidly are getting taller and taller until they almost reach the full height of the carriage. So you have this sort Jeez. of almost closed off, walled off feeling mm-hmm. as the carriage continues. Uh, Gillian, is yeah. this your first time on his property? It is not. Is this familiar? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, why? It's a little swampy for my liking. Are yeah. there creatures in this grass? Nothing harmful as far as I know. Nothing you need worry about, Bizarre, I imagine. Hey, full disclosure to everybody, since he's a druid, maybe let's not mention the part where we killed the whole forest. Thanks. Killed? That sounds interesting. Story for another day. (laughs) We have a lot of those, it seems. (laughs) Yes, well, it's been a while. You've been busy. And you guys press forward. And between the darkness and the sort of lack of peripheral sight lines, it leaves little to do but just kind of continue straight on this path. There's not much that you can see left to the right. Where should we park it? We should come up on this house in a little bit of time. Just keep heading forward, I think. This is the middle of the night at this point. Yeah, it's oh yeah, you're, it's <laughs> midnight later, maybe. Oh, yeah. It's a little dark around these quarters, don't you think? There's yes. No uh, chance we're going to surprise him into an attack. I don't believe so. I also, if Blom is the way I remember him, he doesn't sleep much, so there's a good chance he's still awake. And what is this a key for that you're giving him? We'll get to that. We'll get to that when? When we get to the house. When we get there, what should we say is our purpose? That we're looking for respite, a place to sleep for the night. Honesty. He'll recognize you? And she smiles. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Seems right. like a good friend. We've known each other a long time. What does that mean? <laughs> it means exactly what it means. I it's... don't think it does. Maybe it's not Robert she has the relationship with. Again, our options are rather slim at the moment. How badly was your breakup with Glock? <gasps> <laughs> it wasn't quite like that. The last time I saw him... Uh, We parted on strange terms, not terrible ones. Huh. Why do you have to be so vague about it? Just tell us, Jillian. Well, uh, honestly, I'd rather respect Blom's privacy if he'd rather not tell a bunch of strangers. His business is his own. If he lets us in, it's not much of an issue. Well, I'm pretty charming, so I feel like he'll tell me. I'm pretty intimidating, so he'll tell me. Let's All start right, with charm, yeah. <laughs> and then we'll go to intimidation if the call rises for you. Or about elbows, bizarre. <laughs> and for about sort of the next 15 to 30 minutes, you kind of lose your sense of progress as the road stays straight and the grass just kind of comes by on the sides and it continues to go. And then just as the sort of repetitive environment is sort of lulling you into a sense of almost fatigue oh, no. and apathy, <laughs> It opens up. And those with dark vision, which I think is everyone but 
Zara. Someone who's driving. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm Orbis helping. up there at the front. Can't yeah, see a darn thing. They, these three the have three dark, dark and we don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have driven. Orbis up there at the front. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that a substantial clearing has been sort of carved out into this area. The reeds have been trimmed down, leaving a number of sort of pools of standing water that are teeming with plant life. Water lilies, cattails, algae, sawgrass, to go with a number of sort of flowering shrubs that don't look familiar to you, but they're quite pretty, even in the dark of the night. Mm -hmm. And constructed at the far end of this clearing is a two-story home. Seems fairly well constructed, and it has this kind of larger central two-story frame and then these two sort of wings of the house that curl around. So it's sort of center and then two around. So it creates this almost little courtyard in the front. Mm -hmm. It's not sort of, it, there's no stone or anything. It's not a patio, but it has a little sort of this area in the front. And Jillian kind of leans up to the front. Could you stop the carriage for a moment? And you pull up and you guys are sort of at the edge of the clearing. And she leans up towards Orba. You have some magic about you, do you? Yes, what would you like me to do? Do you possess the ability to detect magical presences? Not today. Not today? You can ask the Goliath. Is that something you can do? <laughs> not today. Oi. It is not this day. We will tread carefully then. You suspect there's magic around here? Yeah. Well, there's... You said he might not be asleep. Is there any uh, logic in us calling out to try to... We could try that. <laughs> I think it's important that Blom is able to see the item I'm offering. Well... I could make it glow. It might still be difficult to see at this distance. Let's sure. just take it slow, and if it feels like you're stepping on something hard... Stop stepping. Oh, well, great. What do you mean? What is the, are there landmines? What are we dealing with here? Blom has certain security measures that he's known to have from time to time. She's pretty good with a bow. Can she launch it towards the house? No, 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 no. No, absolutely uh, not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, what? I, what we have to give him something. Okay. We're going to uh, give him... He's going to then hopefully I'm blow I'm fairly us small. Would you, you did like miss me to, lots of this. <laughs> would you like me to I climb on top of the carriage and show it to him? Why don't you and the tiefling, who can see in the dark, I presume... Mm -hmm. Her name's Orba, Jillian. Orba. It's okay. Walk forward a little bit and just investigate and make sure there's nothing dangerous to step on. Okay, because you know I can disturb the ground if that helps. That might bring him a ruder awakening and welcome then. Okay, well, I'm glad let's that I asked then, because usually I don't. And she hops off the carriage. Let's tread lightly, huh? Please, and be careful, because you can't see. And you guys take a few steps forward. Can I, uh, like, oh, but maybe... What? No, I can do it. I can no, do it. Not. Make an um, investigation check. Me too. Uh, or because you can see, you can't really see. Okay. okay. You're useless. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> standing there no, feeling with my feet. Mm-hmm. Is that... No, it's good enough. I don't know. Uh, that's a ten. Ten. So you you have Bizarre kind of walking forward lightly because she weighs very little, and Orba kind of behind her, sort of watching her feet, holding her shoulders. Yeah, and you can feel at one moment like Bizarre kind of steps, and it feels hard instead of squishy, and you sort of pull your foot back, Orba. and you can see that. Yeah, yeah. So you guys continue to do that forward, and it happens a couple times, mm -hmm. and you guys are able to sort of map out. It's not a direct route to the house, but you're able to sort of slowly make sure that you don't step on any of these spots. Mm -hmm. And you get up close to the front of the house. We made it. Another door. I, I guess, hope you were paying attention. I guess we're up next. And Jillian hops out. And she starts to follow the path that they sort of weaved through the yard. Do you follow? I'll follow her. Can I tie up the horses somewhere first? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's no trees or anything, but they seem... Fairly, I mean, they're munching on some grass, kind of. There. <laughs> I'm pretty, pretty heavy. Is it all right if I stay here until we know that? You can. Um, the idea of them finding the path was that so you don't step on anything at all, not that you don't trigger it. <laughs> all right. You can do it, 
Raven, I believe in you. Come along, Can't Raven. I see anything. Oh, Can I get, um, um, yeah. she reaches behind. She holds out a hand. Okay. Oh, that's cute. It. Wow. Aren't you guys cute? Come along. And the two of them. And are you guys uh, fa- are you guys falling as well? Yeah. You guys sort of make a little chain, and you guys make your way. It's wet. Sort of. <laughs> and you feel the squishing beneath your feet a little bit. Ugh. And you get all the way up to this sort of courtyard <sighs> door area. Yes. I lift my arm. Sure. Do I just knock? Why don't sure. you let? Let's no. Give it a knock. You knock on the door. It seems like a sort of solid door. And you guys don't get a response at the moment. Jillian. Yes. Any ideas? I've got one. Mm. Well, I like it. (laughs) Blom! (laughs) And she starts, like, yelling into the night. Blom! Blom! And there's sort of a little bit of silence. And then in one of the windows on the second floor, you see... A bit of a light come on. Oh, she's about as subtle as we are. Uh, it seems like he may have been sleeping. Oh, or just sleepwalking, perhaps. Mm. And after a moment, you hear a door creak open. Sorry. And it's all up on the second floor, kind of up to your right. And after a moment, a halfling man saunters up to the sort of edge mm. of a balcony. <laughs> And he has a loose-fitting robe that looks like it's intended for a larger creature. It's kind of hanging loosely around him, (laughs) not tied at the waist, exposing sort of a thick, hairy chest. He's got some simple linen undergarments. It's not (laughs) What a stud. There you go. And he sort of comes up to the balcony. Jillian Casivo, you are somehow even more annoying in the nighttime than you are during the day. How is that possible? And Jillian kind of looks around. One of life's great mysteries, Blom. I was uh, hoping we could trouble you for a bit of late night hospitality. Trouble. A bold choice of words for a woman who has been nothing but. No. The light is low, but and he kind of looks around. I see five strangers. Five people I don't know plus one person I don't like. What does that add up to? I think we've got something that might be of interest to you, Blom. And she sort of looks back to the party. Who's got the keys? I have the keys. So I'll take them out of my bag and show the keys. And she looks, and she sort of flips one over that looks like it was the one that was used for the lockbox. And she flips another one over that looks like it was used for the back of the carriage. And she takes the third one, she kind of takes it off the chain. And she holds it up. I've got something for you, Blom. Perhaps you'd like to see your brother again. <gasps> and he sort of looks down. How do I know that's the real key? Well, you were with me when he went in, Blom. See for yourself. And she tosses it up to the second balcony and he sort of catches it and he inspects it a little bit. And then he looks back over. I was awake anyway. <laughs> and he sort of closes the key in his hand. Give me a moment. And he sort of pulls his robe tightly together and he kind of sh- shuffles off behind. And there's sort of a moment as you guys are standing around in the courtyard and you hear sort of, you kind of hear him moving Have you moving been keeping his hands. brother in a cage? Sort of, Oh yes. goodness. You love cages, don't you, Jillian? I do. Not if I can help it. I'm going to need an explanation, but probably not at this moment. Let's all get inside first. Mm. And you hear, you can hear kind of in the inside a little bit of rattling on the indoors. (laughs) And then he sort of, sort of flings the door open and kind of... He's my... Well? And he sort of motions in, but he doesn't really get out of the way of the door. And Jillian walks up. And she sort of looks at him and nods, and then kind of side shuffles <laughs> by him. And he looks at the rest of you. Orba bows very deeply and shuffles across. And rolls his eyes a little bit. I'm gonna kind of sidle by and yet, cheers, <clears throat> mate. Thanks for the hospitality. Mm-hmm. 
Someone my size. How delightful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reach way down. <laughs> And you, it's like impossible for you to get by. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to like reach down and just like lightly put my hand on his shoulder. And he like, looks up at you a little bit. And I'm just like, mm. And he moves slightly for you to come by. <laughs> the two of you kind of go face to face in the doorway. Face to face. And the last one outside. Just look around. I go in, give me like a nod as I go in. Sort of sidestepping like Jillian did. And you move in. And he, sort of holding the door, kind of peeks out and gives a little look around to see if anyone else is there and closes it. And that's where we're going to take our break. Ooh, <laughs> oh my god, what in the world is going on? We'll pick up what right inside Blom's house. Um, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll be yeah, right back. We're going to take a quick go. little dinner break, num, 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 and we'll pick it up. Yep. We'll be back. Wow. Thanks, guys. Oh my god.
Drinking Welcome a cup of gummy bears. bears. He, no, it was, it was special dark Welcome chocolate. Welcome back to the table mm. not, top notch book thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Welcome back to Candy Review. <laughs> How was the special dark? 
Hello. Tasty. Okay, sorry. And we'll dive back in. As you guys enter into Blom's house, you enter into a modest but well-maintained common area, decorated only sparsely with a few potted plants that have sort of vibrant colors. And you're able to see as Blom starts to light the logs in his stone fireplace that he has set up in the back of his room. Sit. I made far too much stew. I will heat it up. You will eat it. (laughs) You will sleep. And then you will go. How does that sound? Sounds like a plan. Very generous. What kind of stew? Does it matter? Just curious. Not particularly. Vegetable. Perfect. More of a plops in front of the fire. And he sort of shuffles off towards what you presume is the kitchen sort of area. And there's a number of seats here, sort of nice cushioned chairs, couches, a couple pillows on the floor. It seems like you could entertain a number of guests here if you wanted to. Is there a Goliath-sized furniture? There's a couch that you could <laughs> sit on and... You know, <laughs> <laughs> It looks like the furniture isn't necessarily halfling size. Okay. <laughs> some of it is, but the, you know, oh, it seems I, like uh-huh. he will occasionally have someone who's not a halfling, okay. so he has furniture appropriate. For them. You have company often. My knees are he up here. Oh, he left. Sorry. He's getting his too. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to sit down on the nearest chair to me, wherever that is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Jillian yeah. sort of takes a pain seat and relaxes his back into sort of a cushion. I plop down very comfortably. Are you sure you don't need healing before we rest? I mean, I guess... She looks... Um, no. Thank you. All right. Well, we have come a long way, haven't so we? So his brother's in a cage that you have. Ah, right into it. I'm sorry, is that... I? <laughs> How about we keep our voices down to start? It's not that, like, Blom doesn't know. True. Sure. The key corresponds to a cell block in the Orenshuba detention centers. A cell block that I own, or rent, privately. During the war, I was sometimes hired to capture key targets, but in such a volatile time, the contract givers were prone to killing the marks as soon as they were delivered. Somewhat of a gray area with the shade assembly, often reneging on their promised rewards as well, so, I came up with an agreement with the council in Orinchupa to rent a portion of the prison that was only accessible to me. I could complete my contracts, and the person who gave the mission could come to interrogate the prisoners at my discretion. That way I could receive my payment, they could talk to their targets, and everybody walked away alive. I assume this was before Polnick took over? It was. Not an agreement, I think, that Polnick was likely to come to. But you still have the cell block, even with Polnick in charge. I do. How did you manage that? Polnick is First Spear at this point, but he is not in charge of the city. I made the deal with the First Select before Dubin, and the deal stands for now. When the contract is up, I imagine we'll renegotiate that, or I'll lose it entirely. Two deaths to inform you of that actually might be important. Um, Administrator Facade died in combat. That is a surprise. Or so we assume. Or so we've been told. We've not seen the body and he's a powerful wizard, I have my doubts, but... It was said that he was killed fighting the undead, but I didn't believe that to be true, do you? It was said he was killed fighting the Ankegs. The Ankegs, sorry. I don't know what to believe, but what I do know is that there is a new... Administrator being elected in the next day, perhaps two. This puzzles you. Who told you that he was dead? He said his body. And actually, um, the uh, uh, the woman who worked at the front of the Keeper library, Picard. Keeper Picard. Mm. But I believe it was Polnick that first told us. He died in combat, and we saw... Ober and I saw a body. Mm. Well, you saw an, we saw an arm. An arm. Yes, but didn't we just learn that there's a spell that allows you to seem dead? True. 
Pulnik is a stubborn bastard, but that's a mighty accusation. You've reason to believe that Pulnik might be covering something like that up. No, I, uh, I believe that... I wouldn't imagine he would be part of it, no. I actually, I mean, he... Pulnik believes, or Pulnik at least, says he has the body of Fusad. I don't know if Fusad's a wizard. Apparently there are spells that can trick or deceive. I just find it hard to believe that a wizard as powerful as we've been told he is was killed by some ankegs. Ankegs are dangerous in numbers, certainly. But I have to agree that I somewhat share your suspicion. <clears throat> Nobody witnessed him fall. Not to us. Bakari, um, um, uh, Keith Bakari seemed rather broken up about it. Um, how honest her tears were. The two of them go back a ways, I believe. When Fusad came into the administrator role, I believe he hand selected Bakari to be the emergency backup. Mm. Would Fusad have any reason to fake his own death? You've been a Nuran trooper more recently than me. What was the other death you were talking about? We don't know a Benji what. Oh, Benji. I'm sorry to hear that. We never found any body. Wishful thinking he escaped, but after the, um... You checked the wreckage of the carriage? Yes. yes. No body? No body. Is he resourceful on his own? He can be. Where would he go? Well, he was hired out of Tuktu. He could go back there, I suppose. Can't say I ever got the impression that Benji was destined for greater things. Did he seem... Ambitious to you? Ambitious is no word I'd use. Me neither. So why? Why would he escape? Well, maybe he was just hiding from combat? Could have been afraid. It was immediately after the normal attack. And you haven't seen him since? No. We searched the carriage and then... We followed the trail of the gnolls, which seemed more pressing than looking for Benji in the particular moment. Does he have family, you know? No. Robert might know. Robert's the one who recommended Benji to me. Hmm. Robert seemed very close with him. Yes. And had... was not aware of his whereabouts. Hmm. Odd. But... I don't have anything to add to that, I'm afraid. (laughs) Keep an eye out for him. You can ask around, I suppose, when we get to Mukmu. Don't know if he'd have any reason to be there. Martha's... A daughter has gone missing. Would you know anything about her? Anything about that? Pie? Yes. I know her. She's um, gone. She's gone missing. She's gone missing where? Molifer seems to think that it could have something to do with a land conflict, but... Their acquisitions up north? Yes. Hmm. Why are you staring at me? Is Erlen looking at Erlen? stares at Orba. Orba stares back. Something going on that I should know about. <clears throat> You're just upset that I met Pi? Well, I thought you might want to provide her with some information about me and Pi. I just met Pi. We threw a ball around together. Oh, she is not, um, she's a bastard, so. There were rumors. Well, consider them true. I met um, a dwarf woman named Ruthie who was taking her north somewhere. I do not know where. From what I understand, the north grows more tumultuous by the day. A number of wealthy individuals have been trying to get the northerners to agree to back a centralized port where the Navigo River flows into the ocean. Yes, Mr. Mollifer mentioned he suspected somebody named Cliff Ironcloud did it. Armand mentioned that he suspected the fire had nothing to do with it, and that Mrs. Morfair has something to do with it. Armand said that? Yes. He seems to think that because she's a bastard, Mrs. Morfair decided that she didn't belong in the house. And he's blaming it on this cliff iron cloud. He seems to be. He seems to believe it, but I would have no way of really knowing. Mr. Morfair might genuinely believe it. Do you know this uh, Ruthie? Ruthie, no. The Iron Cloud, I know. Part of a... How does one describe it? A security force? If, you, if you're if you from the north and someone from out of town is trying to 
buy your property or intimidate you or any number of things, Cliff is happy to step in and mediate. He doesn't exactly run things up there, but he does have a good deal of influence among the Northerners. Mon seemed to think it was unlikely that Cliff had anything to do with it. The kidnapping? That would surprise me, and I'd be inclined to trust Armand if he believed that. Is this ironclad supposed to be nicer than people are painting him? Nicer in what way? Mm. He is hired to bully people around, although perhaps it's the bullies being bullied. That is what I am implying, yes. Well, that might color your opinion of him then. Okay. They call him and his followers the advocates. Why? They advocate for your interests. Somebody from the South says, I'll buy your property for X amount. Cliff either makes sure that that deal doesn't go through at your request, or he attempts to match the offer, with the hope that the Southern influence doesn't continue to bleed into the Northern colonies. Where is that stew? (laughs) Blanc moves at his own pace. So this Navikapura place, you said it's new. Is it... Relatively. Dangerous? Can be. Go to the wrong place. Dangerous to who? Well, to somebody like me. How capable are you on your own? I've already bragged about myself enough to you. I don't want to boast too much. Well, I trust you'll be fine then. If you mind your own business. There's a lot of trade that happens up there. Or if you're looking for a ship to take you east. Okay. Something you're looking for in particular? No. It's just a place that I would like to go to. Why is that? Orba shoots Bizarro a really sharp look. Gets quiet. Jillian. Yes? I know you weren't planning to take me along on your journeys. I was not. Your companions have recommended your services. Does that interest you? In terms of pay, is it solely money that you have to offer? What else did you have in mind? Perhaps we could come to an arrangement. I normally try to keep a small force for these scouting missions, but all things considered, we might end up needing an additional couple of hands. I have my own business I'm trying to attend to, so... I'm trying to pick my battles wisely. Speak. You know a lot of people. You are very powerful in your own ways. Powerful, perhaps. Certainly know people, yes. Who can I introduce you to? Do you know anything about the game of chess at all? (laughs) The light whistle chess. Yes. I'm in search for pieces. Mm. Playing the game, are you? Seems that way. I can introduce you to a few people that I think might suit your interest. Mukmu might have one or two, although Mukmu is not a terribly wealthy or important city. If you're willing to travel further to Tuktu, I imagine you'd have quite a few better options there. What are the names of these people? I can introduce you to them personally when we get to Mukmu. So I'd have to come along? I thought that was the plan. Not going to give you the names for free. Well, I did save your life. You did? And I plan to compensate you monetarily for that. I'll think about it. Fair enough. And at this point, Shuffling back in, with a few bowls first in his hands, that sort of sets out bowls in front of people. Smells delicious. And he shuffles back towards <laughs> the kitchen, and you can hear him sort of starting to maybe pour something into a larger pot. You can hear the sort of flowing of it. All right. Who wants some? And he's holding sort of a big pot, and it's steaming. It's hot. It's, it has a good smell. It seems like it smells some sort of. Carrots, vegetables, garlic, kind of a medley of sort of vegetable. 
And he starts to take a ladle and ladles it into some of the bowls. The bowls are kind of small. They're kind of <laughs> halfling sized. But he ladles it in. <laughs> ladles. Thank you. Thank he you. serves each person. Thank you, sir. Did Jillian tell you the whole story, did she? Parts of it. And Jillian kind of looks down and... Uh-oh. She smiles a little bit. She's got my brother locked up in Orange Chupa. Yes, that part we gathered. <laughs> it would be good to see him again. What did he do? Well, I told Jillian to put him in there. Oh. <laughs> That's why it's rather complicated. Hmm. But you've since changed your mind. Yes. Why? I wanted him in there to keep him from joining the Imperial Army during the war. Ambitious young boy. Mm. But the plan was to get him out as soon as the war was winding down. But Jillian here went to his house to apprehend him and found a number of correspondences with high-ranking members of the Royal Army revealing that they had a plan to storm Finlock Forest and burn down the Shade Assembly. So Jillian took it upon herself to keep him locked up so that that would not happen. For how long? Until she decided otherwise. How long has he been locked up? Twelve years. <clears throat> wow. Twelve years. And why would your brother want to destroy the Shade Assembly? I believe he had ambitions under Emperor Pachakamek and his men. Something that I was trying to keep him out of and was not aware that he was already so deep into. What kind of ambitions? High-ranking office? I don't know. All I knew was that the rebels were more formidable than Emperor Pachakamek thought. When everybody else said they'd never win, I thought they might, and I'd rather my brother not die for a cause that wasn't worth it. Do you think he'll thank you when you do take him out? No. <laughs> but I owe him that much. Will he come here and live with you? If he'll come, I imagine he won't. What's his name? His name's Kralin. Kralin Atula. Shooting Jillian a quick look before he says this. Um, and Jillian's kind of keeping her head down. <laughs> yeah, right. That's fine. Not weighing in on uh, this. Yeah, not particularly. Well, if the stories are true, the Emperor raised the Shade Assembly to the ground anyway, so it seems as if your brother was locked up for nothing. <laughs> seems that way. <laughs> Is the Shade Assembly not raised to the ground? Well, not the last time I was there. Um, Which was when? A year ago, maybe less. Why were you there? I go there frequently. Oh. Operatives are required to go back to the Shade Assembly on occasion, check in. But I believe it was beneficial for Emperor Pachakamek to have his men believe that the Shade Assembly had been burnt to the ground. A morale boost of sorts. Were you from go ahead. originally? Who are you speaking to? Blanc. Blanc. Where am I from originally? Or in Chupa. That's where me and my brother lived. But I prefer the solitude now. The less people I deal with, the better. Any groups you thought about joining? During the war? Or no. whenever? I keep to myself. I always have. I prefer the plants, nature. I prefer the sea as well. I like to be out on the water, mm. which is why I like Doran Chupa. But there's more trouble in the city than is worth it. You don't think you'd be welcomed back there? In Doran Chupa? I don't think they'd spare thought for me. Mm. Their friends try and find the Shade Assembly in Finland for it, unsuccessfully. Who was trying? <laughs> friends, travelers, people you meet in bars. I've never been there myself. Oh, so the Shade Assembly is no longer in Finlock Forest, then? I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> I'm saying, when you meet the Shade Assembly 
If it's not raised to the ground, where do you meet with the Shade Assembly? I believe you're on the wrong train of thought. Jillian meets with the Shade Assembly. Uh, didn't you just say you went there last year? That's Jillian. Jillian. <laughs> <laughs> Jillian's got a nasal thing <laughs> But do you like Finlock Forest? Who are you speaking to? Uh, <laughs> I, I am speaking to Blom. Does he like Finlock Forest? No. I, I've never been there. Oh, sorry. That's so, brief, brief moment of clarification. <laughs> I, think I, I think I'm... So, uh-uh. mm-hmm. the, we haven't asked Blom. Okay, so, so Jillian <laughs> was the one who was responding to the Finlock Forest thing? Yes. Oh, I was talking to Blom. Um, oh, no. Uh, okay, so, so then, okay, I'll so, make him even more yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, okay, so then, what we know Blom is a operative, though, as well, right? No. I thought, oh, oh my god, god, I really was on your. I was with Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I. I didn't get that at all. Oh, I, I also oh thought, I thought that was what? him, not Jillian. He came back in with the food and then he Now I'm really. Now I'm really. We need like finger puppets. Because we're still. Okay. That's our bad. Yeah, no. I was there too. You're amazing, Matt. Don't worry. So Blom has not been the Finlock Forest. Grievous has been okay with Jillian. Like, like, <laughs> 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 it's quite good. Yeah. All right. Finlock Forest. Yeah. I'm going to just hang out here in shame for a moment. <laughs> I'm there with you, Will. <laughs> no, no, John's hanging out in shame. <laughs> John. Same. What are your know. plans for the morning? That's a good question. Mm. Well, I believe our plan is to um, take the back roads out of your property and meet back up with the Pukara River and head to Mukmu. Does that sound like a plan for everyone? To Mukmu? From there we can resupply. And on the way, perhaps you can all give a good thought as to whether or not you plan on accompanying me to the Mykonid camp. To Mukmu. I agree. Just so I know, is there a particular way you're leaning? Because when we get to Mukmu, I might have to find your replacements, if that's not the case. I'm still on board. I figured. Hmm. Sephira? I'm with you. I, um, I did make a promise. To Armand. Hmm. It's a dangerous promise. Yes. <laughs> In exchange for him getting my friends out safely, mm. I told him I'd do him a favor. In Mukmu, right? Yep. No. Armand lives in Tuktu, I believe. No, Tuktu. Oh, Tuktu, sorry. sorry. But if Armand asks you to do such a thing, I would do it. Do you understand? why he wants you. It seems that he has a greater association with you than we originally thought. After all, I did take you off of his list. Yes, it does. Now that I think back on it, he almost pushed for you. Yes, you've made that abundantly clear. (laughs) I feel I owe him that favor, but aside from that, yes, I would like to help you destroy these camps. Erlen? I have, yes, I've been hired onto a job that I intend to complete. Fair enough. The other two can decide whether or not they'd like to come with us. I'm coming. Didn't have to take much convincing there. No. She's eager. But when we get to Mukmu, I'll give you a couple leads for the light whistle pieces. If you deem them to be worthwhile, maybe you come along. How does that sound? Fine, Jillian. Good. Well, we've all come to a understanding of sorts. Perhaps it is time to retire for the evening. Are we safe here? Do we need to set a watch? She doesn't. Are you asking her? Yeah. yeah. I think Blom's property is fairly well guarded. And Blom, who's kind of like putting away some of the things in the kitchen, he like looks back <laughs> in and shakes his head and sort of looks away. Did, did Blom eat any of the stew? 
you didn't see him. He, didn't, he right. said he yeah, had yeah, leftover yeah. stuff. Erwin hasn't touched his stew yet. Okay. Is there, is anyone <laughs> reacting negatively <laughs> to him? <it? laughs> Everyone else is dead. <laughs> <laughs> We're all ghosts, yeah. No, they haven't reacted to it. Okay. We've been poisoned once and suddenly are so paranoid. Then, Fool me once, man. <laughs> uh, if everyone seems to be fine, then everyone's going to sort of pick up and quickly catch up with everyone. <laughs> As you're walking up the stairs. <laughs> There's beds upstairs. There's at least ten of them. Wow. Different kinds of beds. <laughs> I have trouble sleeping, so they're all made of different materials. That's the most impressive thing that's happened on the street. That's the most excited I've ever seen someone about my beds. Mm. I've only ever had like half a bed, so it's very exciting. Wool, straw, cotton, feather. <gasps> I like, once stayed in the Rose District. Oh, goodness. She gave us repose. I know Do you it. Have anything quite fluffy like that? The feather bed's probably the closest, but. It's not exactly Fable's Repose. I'll take that room, thank you. Go ahead. I'll take the biggest you have. Probably the straw. Not terribly comfortable, but Sufficient. keeps the back straight. And uh, none of these have helped you with your insomnia? They do sometimes. If I can't sleep in one, I try a different one. <laughs> right. Feel free to try them at your leisure. Um, Is the idea that they're all in like different rooms? They are all in different rooms, yeah. <laughs> oh, a <little> solitary time. <laughs> <laughs> Orba's been holding the flower this whole time, too. The um, flower that you that was given, yeah. That you're yeah, the ghost gave me. Mm-hmm. Can, she, she goes up to the druid and is like, um, a ghost gave me this. Do you know anything about it? Takes it. It takes a look at it. It's a feltast flower. They don't grow around here. Where do they grow? Usually up in the mountains. Which mountains? I know for sure that they grow in the Wix and Sharky Mountains, probably elsewhere. It's more of an altitude thing rather than a climate thing, I believe. Do I recognize those? The mountain ranges? No, those. The flowers? You might have seen it before. They don't seem to be... Doesn't stand out to me. No, not ranges. particularly. Yeah, but you, you might have seen them around before, yeah. Do you know how a ghost would have been able to give me such a thing? Given to it by a ghost? Yep, by a spirit. Flowers aren't used for anything in particular that I know, and I know my flowers pretty well. I figured. Well, thank you. He hands it back to you. Well, get some rest. And he sort of turns. <laughs> and Julian's already kind of headed up. You guys have a moment to pick beds, take a moment to yourselves. Jillian and Blom are now both out of earshot. Jillian has picked a room and gone into one. Over, would you like first dibs on hmm? on a bed? <gasps> well, they already called some comfy ones. I'll take a semi-comfy one. That would be nice for a change. There, there's some like wool mattresses. Yeah, those are upstairs. Yeah, the beds. You know, yes. Upstairs. Yep, there's yeah. a second floor. Yep. I go into this one. I wouldn't suppose he would mind if I, uh... He don't think he's a bar, does he? <laughs> he offered us... <laughs> I just don't want to go with two downstairs. And room <laughs> you are downstairs at the moment. Oh, yeah, but I kind of wanted to, like, look around the whole... If you'd like to, yeah. So can I, like, on the pretense of finding don't some alcohol... Don't take anything without asking, <laughs> okay. Safira. He Do I look like a thief track. to you? Were you going to look for alcohol to just look at it? <laughs> yeah, I was planning on admiring his nicest bottle of whiskey. I'm, I'm just gonna kind of like walk off. I'm As she goes to walk off, I'm going her by the shoulder. Don't take anything. Oh boy. And I'm pulling out the 50 arrows I gave her, and in Elfish I'm saying, next time I ask you to shoot, you shoot. And I give her 50 arrows and walk upstairs. Ooh. I just like <laughs> I'm standing up by some liquor and uh. What are you doing, man? Like, I don't know. I assume you have a quiver. Not for 50 arrows, yo. That'd be the biggest quiver in the world. It's like a big bushel. (laughs) I've been doing this the I didn't know you took them with you. I said I took them. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah. sure. Then you, yeah. I mean, you could shove them in your bag and they'd be sticking out the back of your backpack or something. Yeah. Well, now now they're her problem. Okay. You can kind of stuff them in so your I bag. I'm gonna yeah. kind of stuff them in my bag yeah. and like. Kind of I mean, they're or, sticking out of the bag, but they stay in there. Arba says, "Well, it's not the bouquet of roses, but you know." 
I really, I truly do not know. I have no idea. And I was like, at this point, I'm like, yo, okay, <laughs> so we're just gonna exit. That was good. Good night. Um, you taking a look around the bottom floor? Are you going? Yeah, upstairs? I want to take a look on the floor. Right, right, make right. an investigation check. <laughs> oh I'm gonna, we're like, gonna get watch kicked out of this house. Again. Keep no, it I'm not gonna right. steal anything, you guys. Why do you guys think I'm gonna steal anything? Like, does that seem in character to you at all? <laughs> uh, Any alcohol uh, thing? Yeah. Search for alcohol. alcohol. So you head b- into the direction of kind of the kitchen area, and you walk in, it's a very well-stocked kitchen. He's got a number of sort of sprigs of different vegetables, spices, and things on the walls. Mm-hmm. You can see sort of sort of a stovetop area where he was heating up the stew, and there's sort of cabinets that are filled with barley, wheat, all kinds of sort of cooking grease. Seems fairly well-stocked. Okay. And you do see kind of a high shelf that has a few bottles. Of, <laughs> they look like spirits. They're not labeled, but they look like okay. spirits. She's okay. going to kind of take a look up there and go like... The bottles are all pretty... Basic. Those look to be like one fancy bottle. Like she kind of has like a moment of like moment of silence for the liquor she's not. And Graven's like tonight. peeking in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm just watching you look Can at. Can I it. look around the room and see? So is there is this kind of like one open like living room area kind of space? Oh, uh, the it? kitchen's separate from the living room. Yeah. So the kitchen, living with the fireplace. The living room has a fireplace. Yeah, and then is there like area. an office area? Not that you can see from here. Yeah, the only there's a room coming off of the kitchen, and if you take a quick peek, it looks like a pantry. I okay, mean, it seems okay. yeah. Okay. Um, all right, then I, I'm gonna head upstairs um, and, and pick a bed. Right. I don't know which bed, but yeah. People downstairs are just bizarre. Oh no, bizarre! Have you gone up to the comfy bed? I went to the bed. <laughs> right. It's Graven. You're still there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> slowly walk up to the straw bedroom. Is there, right. is there any way to upstairs for me to tell yeah. where Jillian went in? It looks like she went in the first <laughs> one, <laughs> kind of collapsing on the first bed she saw. That door was closed when you guys were up, so it seemed like she took the first room available. On the Can I very much know that I did not on that door? Oh boy. And you hear kind of a, sort of a, sounds like maybe a sort of a grass or straw bed that she got up from, and she sort of opens it up. Can I speak with you privately for a moment? And she sort of looks in the hall. I suppose. She lets you in and closes the sort of lightly behind you. Is there a, like, a chair for me to sit on or something? Sure, yeah, there's a <laughs> chair in the, the rooms are it's small, but there's there's like a chair, there's a bed, there's like a kind of a vanity. It doesn't, really, it doesn't have a mirror, but it has like drawers and stuff. I believe Sophia to be a liability. <laughs> really? We, <laughs> all of us were in agreement that the mission was to rescue you. Yes. We all knew the Black Lion tribe was dangerous. We all knew the Black Lion tribe practiced necromancy. We all knew the Black Lion tribe had you. She feels like she's some moral authority on who gets to live and who gets to die and it makes me uncomfortable in combat. I say this now because I believe I know who created the explosion that freed you. And that's something she cannot know. (gasps) Really? Yes. Something you care to share with me? I understand your concerns, but I will say, I do trust Armand, all things considered, and he recommended her to me. She does have skills that are valuable, especially in regards to tracking, scouting. She's experienced in the mountains. I'm not suggesting we leave her behind or anything, I agree. I think that there's specific information that might not be useful for her to know, lest she get trigger shy again in times of need. Her morality is an obstacle, but it can keep one honest. And if she... She did not take well to the explosion, (laughs) to say the least. Necrocilium is horrifying to those who have not seen it before. Yes. I believe if she knows who may be implicated in it, her trust in the entire operation might put it. Who is it that you believe set off the explosion? You know Valco Lavinia, yes? Yes. When I spoke with Robert about rescuing you, he mentioned that the only person... mentioned that Armand is normally the sort of 
people person. Yes, he connects me with many people on occasion. Robert mentioned Falco as one person who he knows and is a mutual friend of yours. He also mentioned that he was a wartime explosive expert. Yes. And given that it was a wartime ex- uh, placed explosives, it seems extremely likely to me that either Armand, but more likely Robert Bastille, may have also notified Valco that you were going to be at the Eastbrook Hall Crossing. As sort of a failsafe if we didn't make it, perhaps. It's not a name I would have originally considered. However, I take your point. I've worked with Valco before. Not just a name recommended to me, but someone I know and trust to some degree. I assume in the destruction of my kid in the camps. Yes. <coughs> there aren't many people who know about the necrocelium that was placed beneath that bridge. I trust you when you say you had nothing to do with the explosion. I don't particularly care for any moral reason. But I trust you in that. Also, you were locked up or incapacitated at some time. It's a good theory. Why do you believe that Safira, knowing this person, would trouble her? Does she know Valco? She doesn't, as far as I know, no. I think it's more the implication that Robert was comfortable with killing that many innocent people that might make her volatile if we ever make it back to Erin Chupa and work with Robert again. For now, she doesn't work for Robert, she works for me. I agree. You think that my association with Robert would give her doubts? I don't know. I do know that if she gets wind of who um, killed that many innocent people, if she ever meets Valco, if we ever work with Valco, that won't go well. And if we ever work with Robert Bastille again, I'm willing to bet that that won't go well either. And it seems to me that working together unconditionally seems to be of the utmost utmost importance at this moment. I take your point. I appreciate it. I believe we can travel to Mukmu and complete the scouting portion of our mission without running into any of these figures. Armand, Robert, Valco. And since she's already in the thick of it, as it were, we ride out that part of the mission with her. Did you see Valco at the crossing? No. Did she? You can make an insight check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but did she? Did she? Yeah, but like... <laughs> uh, like 11? Are you sure? Doesn't seem like she gets her. Theories, but convenient ones. There's not many people who knew where you were going to be when. As far as I know, Robert and the five people you're sharing a carriage with. I take your point. That's all. Good night, Olin. Oh. <laughs> Something on your mind. Bouraj Il Do you know the man? Bouraj Il no, I don't know Buraj uh, Il Cravo. It's a name I know. Um, On your list, yes? Yes. The Il Cravos, as far as I know, are a Goliath clan that mostly hails from the Wixa Mountains, south of Dilasun. I knew a Denatar Il Cravo. During the war, he served as a scout and a guide under the service of Lieutenant Colonel Massif. Denatar did. Denatar, yes. That's the only Ilkrava that I've dealt with personally. Have you heard of the Vorash? No. Do you know if our Goliath friend knows this clan at all? The Ilkravos and the Ilvigos lived in relative proximity. It is possible. Did Graven know the Denat Massive? I don't know if he did. Good night, everyone. Oh, good night. Snake. Erlinger tries to find a feather bedroom. <laughs> there was only one, and Mazzara um, took it. Well, um, <laughs> just so we know, no one saw him go into her room. <laughs> no one heard her sigh. Okay. 
uh, what what beds are available? The most comfortable ones left are like a wool mattress that's been. I was mm-hmm. gonna go to a wool bed. <laughs> sure. That's where it takes time. Um, yes. Yeah. Anything else here in the in the evening? Yeah. Can I take out uh, my page? Yes. From my backpack and take a look at it. Sure. What does it look like? Um, it's a piece of parchment paper mm-hmm. that has sort of. In, in what way? It has a bunch of writing on it. That so it's 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 um it's a written language. Yes. It seems like. Yes. Can I cast Comprehend Languages? Yes. Okay, I do that. Um, you have the spell slot for that, or you're casting mm-hmm. it through a ritual? No, I have a spell slot. Okay. <laughs> and I cast it, and sure. look at the page. Take a moment, you look at the page. It doesn't mean anything to you. I still can't understand it? Yep. <laughs> What? <laughs> what page is this? Mm-hmm. I. What does that mean to me? <laughs> it means it might not be a language. What? Wait. Okay. <laughs> it what? could be a code. <laughs> so it's, like, it's not a. It's I not a it. language. It it's not just. It doesn't translate to. Meaning, like I don't even uh, understand the individual characters. Like. No. <laughs> It's written. It's written in almost like a hieroglyph. Like there's symbols. She's gonna die. It's <laughs> gonna kill her. Or both like slams the bed. With and you her hear face. in the other room, kind of. A... I was, actually, I was just gonna say, do I know what room she went to? Yeah. So. You guys saw each other going. Yeah. I. I maybe right as she did that, I was kind of coming towards her her room. Yeah, you hear like I was a lot of like. like I was like, about, I was like about to, about to knock. She's still just cursing to herself. You quietly knock on your door. Uh, 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 what? Who is it? One second. Who is it? One second. Uh, uh, <laughs> Who is it? Is everything all right? Like, yes. Qu- quietly. Oh, oh, it's it's okay. Hold on. One second, Graven. And I shove the paper into sure. my bag and I scurry over to the thing, still like in a state. Yes. Hi. Hi. May I come in? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Can I open the door? Is everything all right? Yes. No, I was... I, it's just you in here. Yes, just letting out some frustration. Okay. It was uh, a rough day, you know? <laughs> yes. Orba. Mm. Listen. Sephira was... <laughs> she was curt with you before. Mm. And I didn't... We in on it much, but I appreciate your eagerness, mm. and I don't doubt your skills. But I'm not always going to be there. Why? Where are you going now? I just mean that if you fall in battle, I don't know if I'm always going to be there. And I just want you to be careful. I'm not really used to people concerned with my well-being, um, so thank you, and I'll try to be more considerate next time. All right. I spent a long time in isolation, and I'm not used to spending this much time in such eclectic company. Yes, it's something, right? It is. I think I understand. But you've always been forthright with me, and mm. we've had each other's backs. Yes. Just be careful. Okay. You be careful too, you know. I will. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to traveling to Mokmu with everybody. Yes, you seemed pretty eager to come along. You're the only people I know, so... Get some rest. Okay. You too. Good night. And as... <laughs> just like a scooby <laughs> As he's leaving, um, like, I... Because I have those potions in my bag. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the orange one does. So I've just been, like, looking at it. I don't know who to really trust. <laughs> Why would you so, say that? Fair question. Yeah, so that? I, like, don't know what this is, but I know the only people that would probably know would be Graven or 
Orba, right? Hmm. Um, so as... <laughs> I, I come out of Orba's room and close the door like... <laughs> and I just like... Are you in the hall? I, like, I crack open the door because I don't know who I'm going to go to first. And you see Graven. And I see him there and I just there. like yank at him like from the, his side. Like Stop. I'm so little that, that I just like... What are you doing? <laughs> And I pull him into the room. All right. And I pull it out. Have you ever seen this? Have I ever seen this? <laughs> no. Make an arcana check. Mm-hmm. This is like the orangish one, yeah. Yeah. Because you know, you, you know other the other one's the healing one. Yeah, which you would yeah. recommend. Yeah. Three. <laughs> you, take a, you take a look at it. It sort of has a kind of. It's like bubbling and it's it's almost foggy inside, like it's producing like a heat, but uh, you're not able, you would, don't recognize what it does. It's not familiar to you. I wouldn't drink it. Yeah. <laughs> Solid. Solid. But, uh, I don't, Solid. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I'm gonna Where get, did you find it? We got it from um, the man, the, bl- the black lion man that was dying. The black lion man? <laughs> Are you attempting to lie? Because that's not what no, you're doing. No, 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 no. Oh. It was in that. <laughs> it was about ten, when, we went, when he was dying, we went to the. Well, he wasn't. Thing. Yeah, he line. wasn't a black one. He, was, but he oh. worked at the crossing. Yeah. Oh, that's not. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the man that we set off into a safe death. I had, didn't know about that. Oh, he doesn't so. know? Yeah. yeah. What, oh, uh, golly. <laughs> what man did you kill? Who else did you kill that I don't know about? When we were at the crossing. We found a man who told us about the god and... That led you to Jillian. That led us to Jillian, yes. Right. And in order to set him off on a peaceful death... You gave him that? No. He instructed us to go to this place that had a lot of potions in it. Okay, it was like a storage shed. Yeah, Yeah, a storage shed with potions. And to grab the certain one that would help him die peacefully. Okay. And while I was there, I could grab more before it... And you took a random potion from a storage unit <laughs> that has just been possibly doused in necrosiliac... But I explosion. did also grab a healing potion, Raven. Good, I guess. I figured <laughs> one I know and one to find out. <laughs> well, be careful with that. Yes. Do you want me to hold on to it for now? No. I'll keep it. Okay. Which is why I came to you to see if you knew what it was. I, uh. Sorry. I don't quite know what I'm getting into if I go with Jillian. I mean, she's laid it out pretty clearly. <laughs> I mean, it might be dangerous, but. <laughs> are you having second thoughts? Well, she did try to capture me and sell me back to the gentle void. Yeah. <laughs> kind of my life at stake, though, Graven, so... You seem, seem fine now. You've been doing all right. All right. You think Orba would know what it's good for? Possibly. She seems to know a lot of great deal about magic. You know why she wants to get a book me so badly? No. Why won't she tell us? Why? We all have secrets, Bizarra. Been pretty open with my life, I'd say. True. (laughs) You think it's worth for me to go? To be honest, I think you could be a lot of help to us. Thank you, Raven. If Jillian thinks that she can get you some of the information that will help you, then Mm -hmm. I, I would trust her. I suppose. Um. Good luck with your hot juice. <laughs> I won't drink it, I promise. Don't. Good night. Sleep well. As he leaves, I like, pretend like I'm going to bed, and then I sneak back out my door <laughs> and go to orbit. Sure. Are you okay? sleeping? Are you? Yeah. Are you, are you? No, I guess I'm sleeping. Really, I, I, bring, new house. I bring the potion. Sure. Yes, Graven, did you forget some? Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Wilbur. Yes. I know uh, 
You might not be so happy with me. Mm-hmm. But do you recognize this? Well, this curiosity gets the better of her, and she <laughs> takes a little peek. Make a make an arcana check. I think I know. Mm. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. You've seen these before. They're rare, but it's a potion of fire breathing. Whoa! This is exactly what I said. It's hot juice. <laughs> <laughs> hot breath juice. Raven's like, I told you. I it told you it was hot breath juice. Just the story. You just screw heard. the rolls. My intuition went right. <laughs> I know hot juice when I see. <laughs> Don't do it. Yes, I believe some people call it the hot juice. <laughs> Um, Not a colloquial. That's canon now. <laughs> that's canon, We've decided. Um, and do I know, I'm assuming it just makes you breathe fire like a dragon? If you drink it, it will allow wow. you to breathe fire for a short period of time. So um, this is interesting. Where did you, you found this? <laughs> well. You can relay the story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we she were talking the about the, the, the thing. Yeah. And oh, you guys failed to mention that whole part about how you mercy killed the man. Right. Well, we did, and I was able to grab a few extra things. Well, I guess that was nice of you. Well, anyways, this is a potion of fire breathing. When you drink it, you breathe fire. Do you know how long it lasts? You would probably know that. It lasts about an hour. Nice. About an hour, so I would refrain from using it until you know you absolutely need to, you know? I'll keep it safe in my bag for sure. Yes, please keep it very safe. <laughs> I also have a healing potion, just in case. Oh, that's good, because, you know... We get hurt often. <laughs> yes. Is well, that all that I can do for you? Why do you want to go look me so badly? Navi Kapora. <laughs> Oh. And also, I don't want to tell you. <laughs> and Orpah starts to close the door. <laughs> I don't want to well, tell. just know that if I'm going to come with you, mm. you know all about my story. Which you volunteered, I would like to point out. <laughs> Fine. I like you, Bizarra, but I don't want to tell you things. Will you ever tell any of us? If the time is right, sure. But I have only known you three days. I'm not about to go telling my secrets to everybody. So you do have secrets. <laughs> oh my god. Sure, yes, everybody has secrets. Thank you for the hot juice. You're welcome. Please only drink it when absolutely Don't necessary. Don't really write hot juice in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Hot I go juice. back in my room and shove it in my bag. We all. Sit there. <laughs> we know which rooms everyone's in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because oh the God. doors are open to the it's ones that aren't being used. House. So I'm just I I I'm assuming that I can find like a piece of parchment and like sure. something to write yeah, on. You probably had a couple in your bag. So much parchment. So under here. Bizarra's door, I'm Jeez. just gonna slide. Oh, oh no. Boy, one of those Bizarra. Oh. And then. <laughs> Do you like? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then yeah, can you? I think imagine? we know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't need a piece of paper. <laughs> and then can I go to uh, Erlen's room? Do I know where he is? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just kind of stand outside and, and knock on the door. <laughs> Are there locks on the door? Are there uh, no. locks? Yo. There's not? No. Uh, uh, it's just this private house. He lives by library. himself, so it's open. he locks himself in his own room. So I hear him say that it's open, and I'm gonna crack Locking the door. Can I come in? The door's open. For fuck's no. sake. So I'm gonna come in the room <laughs> uh -huh. and sit down on the end of the bed. Erlen was lying down. Actually, still is lying down. <laughs> no, you gotta get up. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> um, like on his back. Completely Look, nude. I think we had a misunderstanding. <laughs> totally clothed, actually. In the buff. Specifically. Go ahead. I think we had a misunderstanding. Yes. Look, I think. I've explained to you I was a soldier, yes? You remember me telling you this story? That's come up, yes. I've switched over to Elven now. 
Okay, I'll switch with him. Uh, <laughs> um, Jesus. Because no. Honestly. Okay. I can understand your argument for why you have to be a little bit understa- empathetic about the reason I'm not so... I don't have a lust for murder, if that's the kind of companion you're looking for. I don't think any of us have a lust for murder. I know you I don't. I do, however, think that the rest of us seem to be comfortable judging necromancer barbarians kidnapping friends as enemies. Yes, well, when you put it all together in one sentence like that, I completely understand. Look, I believe, for reasons surpassing my understanding, that you... Look, I know you care, right? About us getting this done and doing it safely. I know it matters to you. You don't have to say anything. I know it does. Just... It's important to me that we do it the right way. And what's the right way? I think the right way is the way where we spare as many innocent lives as humanly possible. I agree. I do believe that judgments often need to be made very quickly, lest people we already know to be friends get hurt, or worse. Look, it was my fault. It was my fault that Orba got... It won't happen again. It was not your fault It was Orba. partially my fault. Orba is a willing participant and is Listen. capable of handling herself. I understand your concern for her. So you don't think she deserves our protection? I think that I agree she shouldn't go running into combat, but you are not her mother. You are not the one who needs to protect her. Fuck off. I know I'm not her mother. Just... Look, I'm sorry. I'm admitting responsibility and you need to let it go. I'll let it go when you prove... When I prove what capable. exactly? When you prove that you're not a liability. Not a liability? Oh, for Christ's sake, you... I am hardly the only liability in this group. Graven has made difficult decisions. Bazara is continuing to make difficult decisions. Orba can barely survive and continues to make difficult decisions. And yet, when a difficult decision came your way, what did you do, Sephira? Prove you're not a liability, and I will accept the apology. I'm gonna, that pissed her off. I'm gonna stand up and like storm out of the room to slam the door. You guys from the other rooms can hear the from oh, down the hall. And then I'm gonna go to my room. Quick question, does my room share a wall with his room? No. Damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, because like, would a name like Orba come out in Elvish? Uh, yes, the Ooh. name would. Yep. And I have just cast <laughs> understand languages. Oh, true. I Until that last very heated part, it was quiet enough. That, I mean, the walls are solid enough to uh-huh. dampen most sound. Mm. You can hear a little I... bit of din, but you, you can't make out the words. Would I have known it was Elvish? Yeah. Okay. Mm. I like that. I get a little, I get a little something. <laughs> could have been passion. It could have been uh, anger. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Yelling sweet nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds very too. them. <laughs> Definitely. Anything else in the dark of the night? Anybody else? All right. Do I know I'm sharing a wall with Orba? No, you are not. But we're not sharing at all. I said uh, the only reason she caught anything oh, is because you guys are very loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. no, you, you look at the wall and like Graven's <laughs> eyes. Like... <laughs> Erland, who actually never got up from that conversation, is gonna just take a moment to lying down, make sure he gets his half an hour meditation in. <laughs> the perfect time to meditate, yeah. right Please after being yelled at. <laughs> being told to fuck up. I'm gonna go ahead and take no, meditation over. time. Can you guys get into bed. Close your eyes. Finally, sort of. Shaking off the events of the day. You start to go into a nice deep sleep. And Erland, sort of lying there, now done with his meditations, you start to hear noises in your head that kind of grow, and it's a little bit of crackling, almost like the crunching of 
dirt, and you look around the room, and there's a plant sitting on the dresser near the bed, and the plant seems to be growing rapidly, and it kind of grows up, and the bulb of the flower kind of spreads, and the petals spread, and it continues to grow out of the pot, and it starts to sort of grow towards you slowly, sort of almost like a vine creeping, but in you know, triple, quadruple time, faster. Do I recognize the plant, uh, perhaps from the, the... It does not look, no, it does not look like anything from there. Um, important question. I meditated, was that a short rest? Do I have my key points back? You meditated, yes, enough to have your key points back, yeah. Great. Um, so and you take a look at this flower that continues to grow. So I'm gonna hop out of bed and move so I change direction to see if it moves with me. Sure. And it sort of, it's pointed towards where you were lying in the bed. And then it starts to move in direction. How strong does it seem? It's not, it's about this thick. Like, it's not huge. Um, it's moving slowly. It doesn't look like it's thorned. It has a budding flower on the end. What kind of flower? Do I it has like yellowish petals. And you don't recognize the flower. Is there uh, help me out with this room. What's in this room other than this plant? Bed, dresser, and like a little chair in the corner. It's pretty mo- pretty bare. Pretty Dude, mo- you better come save us. <laughs> and the plant grows slowly towards you. I'm, gonna, I'm stepping away from it as it's going. Sure. Um, and I'm pulling out the dagger that I picked up off the sure. guy. Oh. Um, and I'm going to... It, so it has, does it have like a graspy thing on it? No. No, this is like pe- the pebbles. It has like a center and then some petals sticking out. It doesn't seem to have like a... <laughs> a maw. No. Uh, <laughs> should I roll for health first? My, like, if I got a short, do I get a short rest in? Or? Sure, yeah, if you'd like to. Yeah. Um, so just to help us, so if that's a short rest, what do I, what do I get to do? Uh, your hit die? What is your hit die? Yeah. It's fun. Um, 3d8. So you can roll up to 3d8 and heal that much. And if I long rest, do I get those hit die back? Yes. Great. I would like to roll... Do I have to shoot? Can I roll 1d8? And then yes, you see? can roll them on a time. Great. Let me roll a d8. Mm-hmm. A d8. Go on, baby. <laughs> Erlen's like, how much do I go after this, this <laughs> flower? Uh, oh, you understand my train of thought? How <laughs> strong am I? Right how now? hard am I coming onto this flower? <laughs> Uh, great. I just rolled a six. Sure. Um, and it, it, you, yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to, with my dagger out, I'm going to try and, uh, ooh, I'm backing up towards the door. I'm going to sure. open the door. Sure. Is there anything outside the door? Make a perception check. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Natural one. Natural one. <gasps> you sort of back up into the hallway a little bit. Can't sleep, Erlen. And you look to the right, and Blom is sort of there with his robe loosely fitted around him. Oh, God. <laughs> your plant? I have many plants. What does that plant specifically want with me? It can smell you. Smell my what? I can smell you too. It's far too late for riddles, friend. Oh. Walk with me. God. Is the plant still following me out, or is it stopped no, now? it's kind of stopped. Are there plants like this in my friend's rooms that I need to be worried about? No, because I don't think my flowers can smell them. Um, I want to make sure that's <laughs> very true. Make an insect check. Is going what? on? I don't know. Uh, so that's a 14. 14. He doesn't seem like he's lying. He seems very fixated on you at the Great. Great. I'm gonna close my door. Sure. And the flower kind of <laughs> retreats a little bit to meet the closing of the door. Lead the way, friend. He starts to walk sort of slowly. Wow. And you walk alongside him and he, he gets very close. Like he's very, very physically close to you. He doesn't have any, um. He's wearing a robe, yes, <laughs> and undergarments. Yes. <laughs> and undergarments. <laughs> um. Definitely I assume the robe so doesn't. No. I assume the robe or his undergarments don't have like weapons on them, Make perception. Yeah, or like yeah. anything like like I know, crystals, things like that. <laughs> it's a little, perception for a Sunday. 
Uh, 14. 14. I mean, you give him a little quick once-over. He's very close to you, and you don't see anything. No belt, no weapon, no concealed items of any kind. Great, so I'm just going to keep walking with him. He sort of walks alongside you, and he sort of gets his face very close to sort of, you know, he's shorter than you. He's sort of very close to your chest and your stomach. They did a good job getting most of it out of you, but my plants can smell it. It's also far too late to be smelling me, friend. (laughs) I don't have to get close. The smell follows you everywhere you go. What do you want with that? Why do you care? It's a gift. Not everybody knows that. It never leaves you. Sure. Have you ever tried to embrace it? did for a time, yes. And? Did you find it to your liking? There are many things about him that are indeed excellent, and there are many things that are not, especially if you're not already in a position of power or you're not one with enough coin to continue. I agree. There's something about it that they don't tell you, even the ones with the coin starts to grow inside you, even after you've abandoned it, becomes a part of you, and you can't let go. Are you speaking in metaphors, or are you speaking literally? I'm speaking literally, much like a plant. There is a seed and it grows, and if you embrace it, it grants you certain powers. There are few that manage to survive such a transformation. I just thought I should let you know that if you run into someone like me, a man of nature, they'll know you can't hide from it. And who would I speak to if I indeed wanted to embrace this power? Yeah, you'd probably talk to me. <laughs> And that's where we're gonna end for the evening. Oh my <laughs> god! He's a plant. I just wanna say, I'm the liability, you guys. What the fuck is that? I can't unhear uh, it. That's yeah. where we're gonna wrap up for the evening. Oh, uh, I wish I was a plant inside the mask. <laughs> what? The? I'm not gonna have any friends this week. <laughs> Yeah, John, um, we're just yeah. <laughs> he Thank doesn't have enough goddamn secrets. You know, he doesn't. I swear. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. What the? Oh yeah. my god! Thank you. Please come back next time to find Please. out what happens. So many like. So many things. Uh, hey, thank you to all the people who subscribed to yes, this video. Yeah. You're all really, really the lovely. Subs are delicious. Oh, I should have looked at them. Yeah, okay, wait. I got it. I got it. Tangerine stream subbed. Kwamikaze, M bar six. Kwame! Uh, 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 hold on. The scrolls. Scrolls. Is that it? But other people did bits too, and I'm just not seeing them on my chat at the moment. But um, thank you. Comrade Tortell with yes, bits. Yes, Comrade Tortell. Shades of Blue with bits. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Um, come back and join us next time. Next time! Oh my god! We look forward to it. Thank you guys so much. If I don't Have a good night. punch him in the face before that. Wow.
Thank you.
Thank you.